Hey, it's Danica Patrick. Enjoy this episode and use code Linux and save when you check out at GoDaddy.com. And welcome to the Linux Action Show Season 24, Episode 9. My name is Chris. And my name is Matt. Hey there, Matt. Hey. Should I tell folks about the big show? Let's hear it. All right, so coming up today, of course, we're going to have the news in the next segment. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's been uh, some hubbub going around this week. Just a little bit. I think you and I might have an opinion on that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then the second half of the show, I'm going to review my new beast. This uh, right here is the Bonobo Extreme from uh, System 76. Yeah. Yeah, it's extreme. (laughs) And uh, I'm going to talk about it in the second half of the show. And then towards the end of the show... Biggest feedback I think we've ever had in the show. Biggest feedback segment mm-hmm. I think we've ever had. We're going to hopefully get to all of the questions this week that we've put in the show notes. Yep. Uh, and we'll be doing that. But before we get to all of that, Matt, we should do our picks. Let's do it. Woo. All right, Matt. The first one. Now, uh, you know, Matt. Matt. Ah, Matt. No. Sometimes I tell you about supercomputers that run Linux. I like supercomputers. Sometimes I tell you about Nintendo Wii U display booths that run Linux. Ooh, I like that too. This week, Matt. No. I'm going to tell you about a photo booth that runs Linux. Photo booth? Say no. cheese. This photo booth no. runs Linux. Uh, this was a uh, observant uh, oh, wow. participant who was uh, who had crammed in there to get uh, their photo taken. And then during the photo taking process, the, the, the photo booth rebooted on them. Oh, wow. <laughs> and they noticed, hey, look at that. Well, that's the Linux boot <laughs> screen right there. And so then they kind of reversed roles and they took a photo booth of the photo You're booth. You're right. Wow. That's very meta. Very hmm. meta. Hmm. So uh, there it's you totally go. Meta. It looks like... Uh, they say they say here in the that it's uh, uh, hmm. well, that's interesting. They yeah. say here in the notes that it's they say Ubuntu, but I can clearly see that's Red Hat Linux, right? Yeah, there. I was gonna say that doesn't look like Ubuntu. No, that's that's I don't that think that's is, that's it says Welcome to Red Hat Linux. That is, that's what that says. Hence right? the red text. Doesn't as well. it say Red Hat? That says Red Hat. Yeah, or it says Rod Rod Hot. hot. That could <laughs> could be Rod, rod hot. hot Linux. Rod Hot Linux is popular. <laughs> uh, you know, they're rocking that in uh, uh, somewhere with with uh, with uh, Rod Stewart fans. <laughs> clearly. So. Yeah, I thought that was pretty fun. <laughs> uh, and if you have a good runs Linux, you can always send that into the show. Yeah. I love featuring the ones that folks send in. Now, Matt. Okay. Now, Matt, we have uh, we have so much to do today, and uh, I was almost I was worried I was going to be out today. Uh, I, yeah, I got a little no, I got a little the uh, food poisoning or something last night. Oh, it was not no fun. It was not pretty around the Fisher household. No, no. A little porcelain. Uh, so I might have a little bit of a hoarse voice. I apologize okay. about that, but I'll power through it. Power through. That's it. dedication. And Alex, I've got that's dedication. I have got an Android pick. That if you try out a lot of apps like I do, mm-hmm. I am always loading stuff on here. You find that you're just your SD card. I put a lot of my stuff on my SD card. Right. I just find that my SD card just randomly gets full, and I it's, yeah. it's hard to identify what's taking up all the space on right. my SD card. You got so much stuff on there, you can't possibly be expected to keep track. Of and that. you know, yeah. you're probably fam- you're probably familiar with tools like Windurstat sure. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I found a really cool app for Android that's kind of like that, oh, and yeah. uh, uh, I want to talk about that. But before cool. we do, I gotta I gotta say hello to uh, the folks over at GoDaddy.com. Hello, longtime sponsors of Linux Action Show podcast. Good morning, GoDaddy, and thank you for your. Uh, Long time support. Now, of course, uh, when I was chatting with Danica last night, as we do on Saturday nights, we're sitting there and we're uh, shooting the breeze. And she says, uh, "You know, something I, I've been meaning to tell you, Chris." And I said, "Danica, finally." You know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, she, you know, can admit something to me, right? So, what is it, Danica? This episode of Linux Action Show is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. Use the code Linux and save. Oh, well, I, that's that's great, Danica. I mean, that was great, but that wasn't what I was expecting. No. That's fine. That's fine. I'm sure you she's know, That's cool. That's fine. That's fine. That's, that's fine. Cool. You know, I, I, baby steps. Absolutely. Baby you gotta steps. Gotta take, take, take your time with it. So, uh, look, if you use the code Linux295, you're going to get a .com for $2.95. What? That's, that's like, this kind of deal happens like once every five years. Wow. So, uh, I was thinking about it. If you got a bad idea, mm-hmm. this is a great thing for you. I've got some bad right? ideas. You got a bad idea. I've you don't want to spend ideas. a bunch of money. I, I want to. I want to get a domain out there, though. Right. But what if you got a good idea? Oh yeah. Also a great idea because then you're not spending a bunch of money to capitalize on your great idea. So use the code Linux two ninety five when you're checking out to get a dot com up to three of those dot coms for three dollars and ninety five cents. Wow. So what you got to do is seriously, people, just figure out some dot coms you've been meaning to register for a while, mm-hmm. and then go get that done with this promo code. And uh, Linux two ninety five is redonkulous. I, I can't even I can't even tell you what I can't buy for two dollars and ninety five. Yeah, no kidding. You can't get it like a value meal. I mean, you really can't do anything. No. else. I mean, no. that's just that's great. Great. Money. Like an app? Maybe it. Maybe, yeah, maybe an app. Maybe, maybe. an app. But it's or, gonna be hit and miss. Or you can build a website with it. I mean, that's cool. Uh, now, okay, so uh, there you go. So use the code Linux uh, two ninety five when you check out. I also have another great deal. 
Uh, we we have we have a discount on SSL certificates. If you guys want to use the code four ninety nine SSL three when you check out four ninety nine SSL three, you get an SSL cert for four dollars and ninety nine cents. That's, that's just mind boggling. No, I'm awesome. not asking you to have to make the hard choice here. I mean, yeah. I realize you guys might want to use both these, but sure. I would say go use that Linux two ninety five. That's me. That's, that's me. crazy. That is crazy. This episode Love of it. Linux Action Show is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. Use the code Linux and what save. The? Is she is she in the room right now? Is she? Is she under the desk? <laughs> well, I don't think so. Uh, well, she, she could be hiding behind the monitor over there. That is weird. That's Matt. crazy. That is, Danica is uh, omnipresent. So uh, thank you to GoDaddy.com for sponsoring this week's episode <laughs> of the Linux Action Show. And uh, use our code Linux295 to get your .com for $2.95. I just That's a privilege Love to it. even say that. Love it. All right. Love that price. So uh, thank you, GoDaddy. And uh, all right, let's go on to the Android pick, Matt. Uh, It is disk usage. It's a free app in the Android Play Store. And uh, it, here, I'll, I'll let you play with it. All right. As I talk about it, because yeah. it's uh, it's got uh, it's got a pretty nice UI, Ooh, and you can see here shiny. I've I've scanned my uh, SD card, and then you can tap on the different areas of. Oh my gosh, you got a lot of blue. Yeah, so <laughs> so you can see you can tap and it'll break right. out with the, what's taking the different storage, and it, and it the the size of the block represents the oh, size that I it's taking the on the SD card. So yeah. as, as things like some of the smaller usage items, you I tap can in on it and it zooms yep. in, and it'll zoom in, and it breaks then. it all down, so you can see what files are taking what space. Yeah, so that's really nice. Isn't I it? like this. Yeah, so it's got a good UI for going through and figuring out like uh, representatively just in visually just an overall snapshot what's taking up the most space on your freaking SD card. And well, what I like the most about it is as I'm using this, I don't need to stop and think about how to use it. I want to go and zoom in and something, I tap it. I yeah. want to zoom out of it, I tap the same thing again. I'm zoomed back out. I can go back yeah. to the next thing, scroll back and forth. Very, very usable. Yep. I love it. It is. It's, it's very nice. And it, so like Sweet. there's, there's you know, uh, there's tons of apps like this on the desktop. Uh, I use I, I use this like all the time to go through and figure out what's taking up a bunch of space in my home directory. But to have this on the have this on Android is, is really nice, and to have it be free is even better. It's, uh, again, it's disk usage, one word in the Android Play mm-hmm. Store, and uh, you know it's a nice way to kind of manage. Oh man! And I went so, like I use this to figure out like how much how much space my podcasts were yeah. taking up. You know, yeah, yeah. and how much space uh, my Dropbox is taking up, and the I, files that I've cached in my Dropbox. I like this better than comparable apps on the desktop. Actually, this is really slick. Yeah, yeah. love so, it. There you go. Mm. I should have made a I should have made a Linux version of this with the uh, desktop pick this week, but yeah. I wasn't that clever. I could have I could have had some synergy there. Yeah. So check out mm. Disk Usage for Android, and it is free. Shiny, liking it. All right, Matt. The uh, desktop app pick this week is uh, something that uh, it was uh, submitted by a, a viewer of the show, and uh, on uh, Twitter, I believe. Uh, Max- Tweeters, you say? Yeah, it's Maximus Maxi Medeus. Maximus Maxi Medeus. Maxi Medeus at Maxi Medeus. Oh, Max. That works. Yeah, Max. Max, I, I tweeted out last night, hey, anybody have an, an app pick that you haven't mm-hmm. seen us feature on the show before that you'd like right. us to talk about? And uh, he recommended Woof. Woof. And I, I played with Woof. Woof, and I thought, you know what? This solves a problem that I have, so I want to oh, talk yeah? about it. Okay, okay. So uh, Woof is a very, very simple way to exchange files over a network. And so picture hmm. you're, you, know, you show up somewhere with a laptop, and you've probably experienced this problem. You plug into the network, and sure. you just want to give somebody a file... Uh, and you know it can always be a pain. Like if you want to do over SCP, oh yeah, you have, they have to have logins. You have to give him an account, right. or they have to give you an account. It's always one of those things that were a breeze for us, a nightmare for them. Right, That's usually how that works. Right. I mean, yeah. to do SCP is very exactly. simple. Exactly. And or, or if you want to go, if you want to, if you want to send a file to a Windows box, well then Windows doesn't have SSH. <laughs> exactly. That's uh, a whole other box of wax. Yeah. yeah. So that's where Woof comes in. Now Woof, Woof. is like a temporary file transfer uh, utility. And uh, so check check this out. So here I have it. It's a terminal only app, but it's okay. the, the, the syntax is very easy. Uh, and it's the command is just woof. Simple. Once you have installed it, it's, it, it was in the repo for uh, for Ubuntu 12.10 here, which is Mint. Uh, but uh, you can... All right, so look at this map. It's actually yeah. got some pretty built... Helps it. pretty straightforward. Okay. So you go woof, woof, and then you can say woof, pictures, right? So say sure. I want to just transfer this whole pictures directory. You oh, see that's what it, so What it does simple. is it gives me this URL right here. Right. And if I... Uh, now, I don't know if... Uh, oh, this work? Let's see. Oh, okay. just because of where we're in. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see if this works, but... Uh, in theory... Nope. nope. Uh, if uh, else. if uh, if it did work, when you click on that URL right there, there you go. I can do it over here. See, uh, it downloads pictures.targz. Oh. So it, it uh, <laughs> woof. Cool. One of the things woof did is it audit. So it made a URL for that right. for that file, and then it, because I did a directory, it automatically targz the entire directory. 
Uh, if you do just a file, it'll just serve just the file itself, which is kind of Oh, that's neat. handy. So then they don't have to worry about, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about compressing right. it for the person or vice versa. And see, here's my pictures folder now. And nice. this is what I, so if, if I was going to, so if I had a batch of pictures that I wanted to give to a client or a, a sure. PDF report or something like that, I could sit down with my laptop, mm -hmm. open up the terminal, woof it, and just say, okay, here, and I can even email them the link. Right, because if I'm sitting right there, here, click on this link. It'll download the file to your computer. It's very easy. Gotta love and what's, that. And what's neat about it is, right after they click the link, yeah, Woof automatically closes down. So once it registers, <laughs> now of course you can give it a flag so it doesn't do that. So it times out on its own. So okay. it's okay. Somebody's retrieved the file. I'm going to close the session. Nice. So I'm not just leaving a connection right. open on my machine. Exactly. Uh, the other thing that's neat about Woof is there's some commands mm -hmm. in here where you can actually give like a dash uh, s, and Woof will distribute itself. Oh, so, that's freaking great! So you can say, uh, yeah. So you, let me under, let me understand this. So if uh, basically you do the woof s, and then you basically you're going to end up with a URL. You give that to the client. They click this, and then it will install woof from that URL. Is that how that works? Yeah, it'll download okay. the binary form. No, well, pfft. hello, that's simple. Yes, yes. So uh, I, cool. I, I, uh, I've been, I've just been started playing with it because like it was just yeah. tweeted to me last night. But uh, I'm gonna totally rock this. It's man. a very easy way yeah. to move either a directory of files or a single file around the network without worrying about any logins or exchanging any keys or any passwords or anything like that. It's not ideal for every situation. But setting it up on a client machine being that simple, mm -hmm. that's dynamite. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, sometimes if you're the if you're the sender and all they need to do is receive, not, them not having to deal with the UI in some cases is actually a benefit. Yeah. You I just think. click the link, you just type in that and it yeah. just immediately starts a download. It's pretty cool. So that's I woof like and you can get it uh, woof, woof. uh a link to that in the show notes, cool. and uh, or it's probably in your repo. Woof, like woof. a dog. Woof, like a dog, Matt. Woof, woof, woof like woof, a dog. Woof. Woofy, woof, woof. All right, so boy, look at that. We just blew right through that. It's disk usage for Android, and woof nice. for the Linux desktop. Now, before we get out of here, we should remind folks that we have our subreddit over yes. at uh, Linux Action Show. Very active subreddit. We are very active there. We're uh, always watching, waiting, and anticipating all the goodies. Not that one. I clicked on the wrong cheese. That's not the Linux Action that's Show. That's a fine. That's a fine subreddit. But it is yeah. no Linux Action nope. Show subreddit. It lacks the Linux. So uh, Linux. this is where you can vote on stories that make it in, or submit mm -hmm. links to the to stories that might make it into the show, or start a conversation thread if you got some questions yeah. or something. Some feedback, feedback threads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. So there you go. That's LinuxActionShow.reddit.com, and uh, we have how many people do we have in there now, Matt? Uh, Twenty three hundred. Lot. Lots of people. Fifteen people are in there right now. Well, and the fact that there's so much activity, I would say, I would go so far as to say it's one of the probably one of the most active uh, subreddits for its size that I've ever seen. Yeah, Again, for its size, I would say definitely it's yeah. Factual. I agree, it's very cool. Very cool. We really do appreciate that, you guys. And Great that, stuff going on. And like Matt said, we're trolling that ourselves all the time. We're Constantly, always, we're always looking for stuff. And uh, I, I, mean, I probably visit. I way too much. I go oh yeah, I live. I, stuff, I spend most of my day in Reddit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do. I'm gonna say <laughs> often the Linux action show subreddit. Just kind of reading, trolling. Uh, now, one last little uh, piece of business before we get to the news is I just want to remind folks that you can help uh, support these shows by using our affiliates at the bottom of the Jupiter Broadcasting website before you shop this holiday season. Yep. Yep. Something to consider if you're gonna do a little Amazon shopping or maybe a little uh, eBay or uh, Newegg or Best Buy. You can go there and. Uh, yeah, it's a fantastic way to give back and uh, support the yeah. support the show. Absolutely. All right, Matt, with all of that done, let's do the news. Mm. So, what's new in the news? All right, Matt, I think everybody saw this story on mm. Friday, I think it was. Our, uh, Richard Stallman mm -hmm. took to uh, his I don't know if it's a blog on the uh, Free Software Foundation's website, but uh, he made a he made a, yeah. a post, yeah. and uh, in which that he equated Ubuntu's uh, new uh, Unity uh, shopping feature right. to spyware, and uh, he uh, he raised quite a stink on the uh, on the interwebs because uh, because it does this uh, you know this uh, submission of your uh, of your search query in right. the in the dash it sends each character to canonical. He said this well, equates uh, this equates. Uh, Ubuntu to spyware and mm -hmm. tracking. Okay. Well, and, and here's the meat and potatoes of just like breaking this down in a very logical manner. Uh, he used the term spyware. Generally speaking, for this to be spyware, you did not opt into it or you did not realize that this was going to be included in your experience. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody knows this is included in their experience out of the box. Also, it's worth noting that it's really easy to uninstall. Now, you might even be able to say... I could even I could even justify the argument that he considers it adware, kinda, but I, I think spyware is, is pretty uh, ridiculous, um, and even adware I think is ridiculous because well, it does uninstall easily enough. Let's go back so, to your comment you know. though, because you kind of registered there something yeah. with me. You said you said for it to be spyware, the user okay. 
I don't know if it is true that all users will realize that everything you type into mm-hmm. the dash is sent to Canonical. And see, that's part of the problem. Well, is like okay, if I just type okay. terminal, right. that's being sent to Canonical. Yeah, but honestly, yeah. I mean, I, I get it, but at the but at the end of the day, if you're if you know if you're running an operating system, and well, I mean, like, but what are they doing with the data? How you know? I mean, like, where, where's that? Right. Uh, so you're saying this? Right. Someone types into the terminal. That that information is then being run through their servers. Not type into the terminal, but if okay. you what, but any, if you're t- using dash, any that, character you type into dash gets right. because they're in in the background, they're trying to match it up with a product. Sure, 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 sure. So the basically it's going to go out. You know, it's basically going to go out on a what a port eighty or whatever it is, and it's going to basically mm-hmm. be bounced around the servers. Is that going to be retained for anything? I I'm I really we don't, don't know. I don't see any value in it. Um, and 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 I've had some experience in this area that I would point out that most of the companies that do this type of thing, there is more to risk than there is a value of it. So I don't think it's going to be an issue because you got to understand if if they did in fact do that, which I don't think they do, do you realize the amount of you know what storm that would come about if that came to light? Do you really think they're going to risk their business model on Amazon affiliate stuff? No, they are. Well, but I mean, like, I mean, but in in bigger picture stuff, I mean, like, do you think they're going to risk it by going so far as to actually then abuse that data? Oh, b- versus I see anonymous data. Yeah. Anonymous data yeah. being, uh, you know, some random people bought a right. razor or whatever it is. You know that sort uh, of thing. You know what I, about? I, I don't so what about this scenario? And this is a little paranoid. Issue. But what about this scenario? Uh, so uh, what if um, I'm a hacker? Sure. And sure, sure. Uh, I'm breaking into co- company networks, and mm-hmm. then I right. sell them the fix. And the feds want to stop me. Okay. What if they got a legal warrant and and served it to Canonical and said, give us a history of every command that this user has typed into their dash? But do they associate each? Is it like that? Well, they have do they make IP. that connection? Yeah, right. But do they do they actually maintain that IP or is it just passive? Is that something that is then just passed through? Canonical, this is, this is actually... Yeah. So I, I, I'm going to assume they don't because if they did, that would be stupid. I don't think that the, I don't. They're think, not clear enough. I mean, so I canonical. Risk it, canonical is uh, canonical's uh, privacy policy. I read it last night, yeah. and it's it's vague. It says uh, they can share your uh, your search query and IP with third parties if they need to, mm-hmm. um, and it doesn't talk about retention at all. It doesn't. Right. It doesn't say what their retention policy. Well, and then it leaves them open ended. I like I said, I'm not. I'm not saying I totally trust these guys. I think they're great. I'm taking right. the approach of it's so. Stupid to do that. That I don't think they would do that. So let's. I, I, I don't. I don't see. I don't think the value is important enough for them to risk that level of business. Model. So here's what Richard so. Stallman said. He said Ubuntu yeah. is a widely used and influential, influential GNU Linux distribution. Uh, it has it has installed surveillance code. When yeah. the user searches her own local files for a string using the Ubuntu desktop, Ubuntu sends that string to one of Canonical servers. Uh, then he goes on to say, but Canonical, then I'm just kind of reading some highlights. Sure, sure, sure. But Canonical has not abandoned the Ubuntu spyware. Perhaps can- Canonical figures that the name Ubuntu has so much momentum and influence that they can avoid the usual consequences and get away with surveillance. Right. And I do think it is interesting. I don't know of any. I, I don't know of any other operating system, let alone Linux distribution on the planet, that sends all of your keystrokes in the launcher to a remote system. Now, things like on Android, like. Uh, like the Google, the Google integrated search that I have here on, on my Nexus. Right, right. Those, when I type into that, those characters are sent off to Google. Or like in Chrome, when I type in the awesome bar, whatever they mm. call it, th- those characters are sent off to Google. Right, right. But in the actual operating system, you know, but there's not there's nothing like that. And I think Canonical is one of the first right. to ever implement something like this, I think. Well, and, you know, the way I look at it is, is there room for abuse? Oh, absolutely. I'm not going to deny that. Could, could this potentially, could could retention be clicked on? Could they even be doing it? Certainly. Uh, and that doesn't thrill me. I don't like that. But And so I want to clarify. I understand that. I do. I understand that. My argument isn't, could it be done? My argument is, <clears throat> are they stupid enough to do it? I don't yeah. think so. I yeah. think, I, 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 I've worked enough with companies in this area that I know that it doesn't make any sense. Right. Data being sent forth is not always a red flag. Your browser yeah. is a bigger security exploit well, than anything Canonical is going to be doing. A lot opinion. of a lot so. of a lot of stuff as we go forward is going to you're going to do some work locally, and you're yeah. also going to do some work in the cloud. It's going to right. it's going to you know you're taking advantage of offsite sure, processing. Sure, sure. Uh, I think the core issue here is Canonical has screwed the pooch on this matter from the very beginning. Uh, they first implemented it in the beta without SSL. Mm-hmm. And while they yeah, they, they, they very quickly that corrected tough. that, 
Right. That to me is indicative of uh, they were not ready for this. No, they weren't. So the first go around didn't didn't have your search queries encrypted. Then then there's the then there's the problem of I take it off of my installs. Right. Not because I don't want it uh, because of you know ads. I don't want it because it's just simply noise and it doesn't work exactly. very well. The feature itself right. sucks. And that I the results agree I get yeah. suck. I get I get recommendations for commercial software that only runs on Windows. I get recommendations yeah. for crap that I would never want. Yeah. Um well, see, that's just it. I don't use the dash. I mean, that, I mean, like, I totally remove myself out of the well, equation. I just don't use it. So there's, so there's, so, <laughs> so my, my, there's an issue where I just think it's a crappy feature. That's yeah. crappy. That it's just, it's crappy. Yeah. Then I think that the, 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 the real fix would be for all of this. The, the real solution here mm -hmm. is you just put it in its own freaking lens. I, you yeah. have a products lens. I completely agree with that. I would prefer that. I would probably use Dash more if it was. I mean, my reason for using it was much like yours. It's just it's irrelevant. I use a separate launcher. Uh, my philosophy, if I if I'm you know the guys running Ubuntu and stuff like that, if I'm the guys that are supporting this feature for self preservation, I would go so far as to either clearly indicate that there is no retention, or better yet, mm. add in the feature of, by the way, here's kind of a data liberation thing to where you can see what we're looking at. We're going to run a demo and show you what data is actually being transmitted and what we're doing with it. I, you know, yeah. that would solve a lot of problems because yeah. I understand the concern. I'm just saying, I, personally, I don't care because I don't use it. It's kind of yeah. like saying, oh, you know, this could happen or earthquakes could, you know, don't don't use the feature if it's concerning you or use an alternative desktop based on Ubuntu that doesn't run Unity at all. It's so here's solved. another problem, you know. I I just want to I just want to kind of put a couple of these things out on the table yeah. because I I honestly I read Richard Stallman's post sure and uh, he said something in this that that I actually kind of I it actually clicked with me a little bit he said uh, 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 it, 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 uh, if a sufficient part of our community's opinion leaders view this issue in personal terms only if they switch the surveillance off for themselves and continue to promote Ubuntu. Canonical, canonical might get away with it. That would be a great loss to the free software community. See, and I disagree with that. I completely, I think that if people switch it off and they're aware of the fact that, hey, look, three quarters of our users are not using this feature, it becomes a logistical issue. Why are they, why implement it? Why spend the money and the time wasting, wasting See, your hassle with it? I think at the end of the day, with it, but maybe I'm wrong. I, I find know. this whole feature a bit offensive yeah. because it does flirt with some significant privacy issues, and I'll, oh yeah, and I'll tell you, area. here's another, here's here's another element to this entire thing, which really is not being discussed enough. And I have mm -hmm. a link uh, here. It is. Okay, uh, this might have actually been a this might have been a blog post from a canonical employee. Mm -hmm. He goes to point out that if you just cat one line to your Etsy environment command, uh -huh. you can redirect where that stuff gets sent when you type into your dash. So if I'm That's a, cool. if, well, no, if I'm a, if I'm. No, I mean, if you want to actually like use it as a tool to diagnose what's happening, not, not that you would want to see it abused, obviously, but. But what you could do is if you're a, if you're an employer, you mm. could modify all of oh, your employees' Ubuntu saying, installation. Right. You could monitor all the commands they run on their uh, system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all it would take would be like one deb package that, you know, because you install that as root, right. so it would have authorization to echo something right. in the environment file. Or it would take, a, so maybe somebody downloads one of those deb files. So it almost becomes like around. a key logger at that point. I see what you're saying. Yeah, right. I can. I, I, right. If you get somebody to do something as root, I can echo one line to that environment file, and then I send everything I type in the dash mm. to that server. Now, yes, yeah, yeah, you yeah. can. You can pop that privacy option right. that turns that off. But here's the other problem: is lenses don't have to respect that privacy option. Right. That's an That's undocumented true. feature that is an opt-in on the half on the behalf of the lens creator. The lens creator has to check for that privacy feature right. and then disable itself. That's that's a good point. No, that's a really good point. And I don't like that either. And the second thing I don't like is if I don't if I just don't want shopping, I have to turn off right. all of my internet search. But that's, yeah. I've talked about that before. So I think, you know, just from, so this is an issue. The fact that yeah. it would be, it can be easily abused by a school, by an employer, by a, by a jealous spouse, by whatever mm -hmm. it is, sure. that's an issue. The second issue I have with it is Canonical's overall, the response has been good, but it, to me it indicates. It started out pretty rough. I, I'll actually, I'd even go so far as to say it started out pretty rough. I, I. You know, I, I think at the end of the day, for myself, it, it's it's going to be interesting. I don't I don't think this is going to be long term. I think it's ever evolving, and I think that's been kind of their message so, and, thus far. And like like F and B says so. in the chat room, is you yeah. can uninstall it. But is this? Do well, we see, want... I would go. I would go farther than uninstalling. The problem is, is that even uninstalling it doesn't necessarily mean you're 
actually safe. Maybe you are, as you pointed out with the lenses. Maybe it's not actually as safe as you think it was just because you uninstalled it. You don't know. I, I, this yeah. this I mean, is so a Windows, fair. though. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to sit down on a Windows. Right. You, you know, don't want to remove Windows, all the stuff. When you get a Windows computer, you spend the first two <laughs> hours removing everything or wiping it and yeah. starting fresh. I don't want Ubuntu to turn into that. This right. is definitely one of the... F- this is definitely something one of the first things I turn off. And again, simply because it's a Doing, shitty feature. Yeah. The, it looks bad. Yeah, no, no, I agree with that completely. That and the results suck. Yeah. And so uh, overall, I, and, and also, Jono, Jono posted on his blog, and I thought, I thought Jono's response sort of missed the boat. I think Canonical's sort of trapped in this group think mentality about this, and they've really du- yeah. they, they're doubling down on it with 1304. They're going to they're gonna put even more stuff in there. And while I don't think the whole idea needs to be thrown out, Right, I think you know you need. There's they fact, need to compartmentalize it more. Yeah, there's yeah. already a patch submitted to put the shopping stuff in its own lens. There's right. already a patch that they just need to take it and use it. Yeah, it's all it's already been done, and they just need to say, all right, this is not something people want in the global search, or make it an option. Well, and I think, but I, I think going back to a few episodes ago when I said it was all about the cookie, it is all about the cookie. Uh, I I think that it's dropping a cookie in you, and At Amazon, uh, when you go cookie. back to Amazon, and it's it, you know, they may not be using the lens to buy stuff, but if it dropped a cookie on you, you could very well be making the money in the long term later on. So I mean, you know, within that twenty four hour period or whatever it is, um, so that that may be an issue for them. I no, I would agree logistically. It's, I, I don't. I don't care for the feature at all. I think it's a mistake as far as the way it's being handled. Do I? But do I think it's spyware? I think it's. I think yeah. it's poorly done. I yeah. just. I don't. But I wouldn't use the word spyware because I've seen that. T- I. You know. I, when I think of spyware, I, I think of something uh, yeah. that's. I think of monitoring to monetize, like yeah. malicious monitoring exactly. to monetize you. Um, yeah, and I don't think it's malicious. Well, I think it's ignorant. I guess they I, I are. Think different. They are monitoring yeah. me to monetize me. Yeah. No. I mean, it, I, for, and for me, for spyware, it for me personally, the differential between I would I would I would label it adware, but I wouldn't label it spyware. I would label it adware because it is essentially advertising, yeah. uh, with you know. And but you're obviously aware of it. Um, adware, you're obviously aware of it when the little deals are popping up on you. So I, I would say adware is a fair designation, but I don't know about spyware. That's a eh, you know it, that's that's overused. Canonical. One of one of the things that's done that served them well. Is is yeah. sometimes the community's pushed back and they they've stayed the course and, and they and I think they will I really think they will they I think they've really got to look at this uh, I don't think it's necessarily going to stay in its current evolution but I think it will some variation of it whether it be its own lens will probably happen um, my, my philosophy on it is thankfully because the advantage of the fact that it is Ubuntu Linux is that we have this community so we can have the dialogue about it and if we decide it's not for us we can use an alternative desktop which completely solves the issue for that individual I wonder um, do, do you think you this know, is an indication that they are just you know, absolutely desperate for money no I think they're 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 desperate to prove a business model they need to in order to uh, uh, Potentially attract new investment down the road, or to actually say, is this really, is this a, is good, this better suited as a nonprofit? They need to determine whether or not that they can sustain themselves at some level, especially in the desktop space. I mean, the server stuff that can that's pretty easy, but you know, I mean, as far as getting into that mark, that racket because you're dealing with enterprise, dealing with money, that kind of things. But when you're dealing with desktop, that's a much more limited space. Trying to monetize Linux, I have extensive experience working with the folks at Linspire back in the day, and I can tell you, it's not as easy as people think it is. Yeah, it's just not. Yeah. And that didn't go so well for them, as you probably remember. There was a lot. I remember screaming at a few of their community managers, going, "Why aren't you guys doing this one thing?" You know. So I think they're trying to find a way to monetize the desktop, and that's a hard mix to do. I just wish that they had more of a town hall meeting approach to it, to where we can examine this and really have a conversation and say, "We get what you're trying to do, but this particular aspect of it isn't is worthwhile." Amazon's cool, but let's lens it, guys. Come I on. think I think if another company yeah. did this, I think. There's some level of inherent trust that the community has for Canonical. Yeah, they're obviously yeah. they're 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 cashing in on that with this, and yeah, they're. it's not necessarily a good idea. Uh, I mean, I just want to back up here. Sure. We're talking about the default desktop environment, which, as we know, users don't change defaults very often. You know, your average user, the average user does not know. No. Records everything you type into the launcher and sends it to the company that makes the right. product, right. and. That's not opt in by default. It's opt out by default. That's fair. Uh, that's that fair. seems so backwards to yeah. me. And, that, and that's where I come into that whole it being. That's what distinguishes, uh, you know, uh, like a software that's ad supported versus adware. I think that's kind of the distinguisher. Because I mean, I think I think saying it was adware is a fair is a fair statement because of the fact it is an opt out. Yeah, um, I, I'll give you that one. But I I think spyware. I don't I don't necessarily agree with that. Going back to Stallman's point, I personally think that. He's a little more sky is falling. If I was making that same blog post, I'm going to say, look, here, here's where we're at. I 
I like Ubuntu. I like the Ubuntu base mostly. That's my real meat and potatoes of it. I like the PPAs. I like all that stuff. Use use X Ubuntu, X Ubuntu or yeah. you know L Ubuntu or whatever. But use some of the other ones and problem solve. That's not a good answer though because that's not what know. I mean. That's yeah. I mean, I mean, I until and I say that with the fine print of until they get get their new normal. You know, I I look at that that it's something you got to wait and see. You got to decide on what your comfort level. To me, is. it says don't use twelve ten. Use twelve oh four. Yeah, you could do yeah. that too. Uh, you know, I truly, I would literally just be like, well, I really like the Ubuntu base, so I'm either going to use something else based on Ubuntu, such as one of the derivatives, or uh, I will use a completely different distribution. I, I know uh, from whatever. my email inbox, I just this morning read an email from somebody who said that I'm, because you know I I complained about this in our twelve ten review. Yeah, and uh, I I was reading an email today. Somebody just caught that twelve ten review. Yeah, and I yeah. said I was way off base with my concerns. Sure, I was sure. way off. I shouldn't be worried about it. And you know, in thirteen oh four, they're gonna they're gonna integrate in purchasing from the dash. From right. Amazon, I buy a lot of things from Amazon. That actually yeah. could be useful to me. So I'm not totally saying this feature right. has to go. But, but look, get it compartmentalized. And you know, yeah. it's interesting. You you talked about the Stallman's language, yeah. Stallman's approach. It, it just he's so absolute on everything. It just yes. it's kind of like you know, I I no problem with his his saying, "Hey guys, this is really dumb. I'm I'm cool with that." I, where I have a problem is to is to okay, this is really dumb. But rather than having a discussion and actually trying to get them to listen, we're gonna this this whole let's go protest and boycott crap. It, you know, honestly. If that's your thing, do what you got to do. Myself, yeah. personally, he, he asked I'm people gonna, to shun you know, Ubuntu. Yeah, Ubuntu. that's stupid. Uh, to me, that's just dumb. I, I, you know, make your make your voice heard. I think that's important. But decide what you want to do from that point. If you want to, you know, uh, temporarily or permanently switch to something else, do so. But so you, you know, that's here's up to you. the thing. So when I first saw Richard's post, uh, and you can see you can see it in the last subreddit. My, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got really hung up on his words and like you know surveillance spyware. That's uh, my point. Yeah, it's just but. <laughs> Then I realized, do you remember, we talked about it during our 1210, I think, yeah. review, the EFF came out uh, on October 29th and, and essentially raised a lot of the same concerns. And while we talked about it, it did not get the circulation that RMS is posted. I mean, RMS's post has been cross posted to TechCrunch. Yeah. It's been cross posted to a, a, a lot of a lot oh, of yeah. tech and, and it's because of his uh his legacy history. I mean, because of, you know, his uh history with uh, you know, the the uh, free software movement and all that sort of stuff and uh his uh own views and everything. So yeah. I mean, he has a lot going for him, well, and, you know, and, and, he, and he tends to s sexy it up a little bit yeah. as far as his language. I mean, I, I, you know, I so. think I think it's I think the way he writes is a little intellectually dishonest is in sort of the same way that yeah. that you know Fox News or a lot of the newstainment outfits can can be uh, over yeah, the top, right. and they can he's definitely pushing his own agenda and his in his words. There's no question. Yeah, yeah, but so. I think at the end of the day, though, he's made me think about it some more, and yeah. I kind of don't like to say it, but I tend to agree with him in the sense that this is a mistake on Canonical's part. Oh, it's a de I, no no argument there. I, it's, it's what you do with the mistake. It's yeah. whether or not you're going to the sky's falling approach to it, or whether you're going to say, well, you know, I'm either going to do twelve oh four, or I'm going to use a derivative or uh, another spin or whatever it may be. Um, you know, I, for me personally, I just don't care. Yeah, I I, I use I use uh, Xbuntu and I'm fine. I I'm very very happy with it because I got my cake and eat it too. Uh, I don't agree with it. I've voiced numerous times my opinion on the whole dash lens issue and uh you know made that made my piece there but it's something they're gonna have to decide for themselves but at the end of the day they're a private business and if that's what they want to do that's that's what they're gonna do uh it doesn't mean i have to applaud it but you know whatever i'm reading the uh, chat yeah. room's thoughts as we go we do these shows live <laughs> on sundays at 10 a.m over jblive.tv and of course sunday 10 a.m is uh also uh, 1 p.m eastern and that's uh 6 p.m so. in london you know well, and j just to reiterate, you know, I want to really make this clear. I completely and totally, probably better than you could ever imagine, understand what, what the concerns are. I really get it. I've been the victim of a privacy exploit before. I understand. What I'm telling you is whether or not you take ownership of it or whether or not you complain and whine about it. I'm saying take ownership of it. If it's something that's important to you, don't use it or find an alternative. <clears throat> but if it's not, you know, I mean, it's really, it's, your, it's in your thing. So do what yeah. you got to do. Myself, right. personally... Eh, I'd whatever. like to hear what the folks think. Let us know. Email us Linux Action yeah. Show at JupiterBroadcasting.com. And those of you who are totally cool with the shopping lens originally, because I heard from a lot of you, yeah, never are, ha have you changed your opinion now? Yeah. Let us know. And uh, I'll just leave it at this. I think yeah. uh, if Canonical, I think we'll look back at this, and this will either be Canonical has to decide if 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 Ubuntu is the platform for the users or if it is something else. And it, mm -hmm. I think the I think the way. The way the technology trends are going, 
Microsoft and Apple at a certain point will probably have less and less incentive to continue to invest in their desktop operating system. Yeah. So the consumer and and the entire market, the whole ecosystem out there will be looking for a viable desktop operating system that can scale across multiple types of right. devices, ARM, Intel, all that yep. kind of stuff, has good game support, and, 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 mm -hmm. and Ubuntu is so perfectly positioned for that. If they crap on their users, though, yeah, I, I don't really see I don't really see why people would switch to a system that yeah. is. Well, and from a usability point of view, I think it's a stupid feature. I don't like it. Am I concerned by it? No. All right, all that's right. all I'm saying. All right, we'll leave it at that. Okay. I just, I just hate I just hate to see what could potentially be some of the. F I think in, as long as I've covered Ubuntu, which is essentially since the show went on the air, this is the biggest mistake I've ever seen them make. Sure. And then to see their group think response. Oh yeah, no, that I'm on board with. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I definitely do not think it's a, a, a grand feature. And I think I'm hoping that they will sol solve this problem on their own, one way or the other. I hopefully they will come. I don't to, come think to they that, recognize it you know, as a big of a problem. I think they think. I think if enough articles come out negatively oh. about it, I think that, uh, or just enough people quit using it. I personally, see that that's again what I'm saying. If enough people are turning it off to where, yeah, some stuff may be still going on in the background, some anonymous data. It's not data. clear enough. Yeah, but but if it's not monetizing from a business perspective, it's just not worth bothering supporting. I mean, if this was you Microsoft, know, for, uh, if I was them, it, you know, yeah. Richard claims that he, he'd heard that Microsoft is doing yeah. this. I remember hearing that too, and I believe it was debunked years ago. And I don't okay. know why he's 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 very vague when he refers to it in his post about Microsoft Windows recording your keystrokes. Sure. sure. Uh, but if it came out that they were, oh, well, that'd be huge news. Yeah, and the, and the fact people are all if. If you really believe a proprietary operating system is not logging what you do, well, you're, you're drinking cooler. Or your ISP, Come or on. Google, yeah. or your phone that, manufacturer. That's my point. Your privacy's been dead for a long time. So. Unfortunately, people have no <laughs> idea how bad it really is. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that, that's, why, that's partly why I have that cavalier attitude. It's not because I don't care. It's because I actually get right. it more than most people. And I'll tell you this. You know, my my final my final judgment on this matter really I think I might hold it until the next LTS. Yeah, you know yeah, because that's fair. Yeah, and, and see if they've refined this or d or dumped an issue, dumped a product that people aren't really that excited about. You know, twelve oh four is a great release, yeah. and uh, uh, you know, uh, twelve ten is a little rockier. Yeah, um, it's got some performance and advantages but we'll you know the next long term release may we'll have this uh, resolved we'll see that'd be All cool right. okay so we'll see what they say and if you yep. know uh, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts but uh, why don't we uh, why don't we transition to steam do a little okay let's do some steam get get us get just shake all that off now just shake it off. oh i'm going to get <laughs> flamed it's okay all right so good news good news uh, first of all uh, steam games in uh, in the steam store i've begun adding linux support that makes it just so ah. official when you're browsing the oh, steam yeah, store no, that's cool, and right? you look down there and you see <laughs> linux system requirements man is that exciting i got to tell you it's awesome uh, in other Steam news, they've also opened the beta up to another 5,000 oh, wow. more players. I know Holy we've heard, cow. Had a, I saw a few people in the subreddit have now gotten Holy in there cow. now, so that's awesome. And uh, also, in, uh, in the, uh, for the geekier folks out there, they've also started a Steam Linux beta mailing list, which nice. uh, you can go check out the archives. We have a link to that in the show notes. But Matt, mm. big rumor this week that was uh, sort of uh, char supercharged by Gabe himself. Oh, yeah? Is that Valve will release its own console-like PC for the living room? Ooh. According to Gabe, Gabe Newell of, wow. of Valve. So and is mean, that sucker running Linux or coming from a Gabian? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. he doesn't. He doesn't exactly say, but he implies that work needs to be done on the big picture mode under Linux before it'll be ready. But he doesn't say it's going to run Linux. <laughs> right, 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 uh, right. But you know, he just kind of kind of makes it sound like that. I've you know we've talked about this. Yeah. If. If if Valve released a, a set top box, right? If it ran Linux, that would be so great for desktop Linux games because that is just one more reason for people to target Linux. And you're right. going to have like so Steam has this section of uh, controller friendly games, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if we got some of those ported over to Linux, that would that'd be, be great. Very cool. That'd be great. And very you know, cool. big picture is working now under Linux. I, I, as far as I let me say, as far as I know, it's working just fine. I haven't had any issues myself. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyways, this this was coming. Gabe was talking. I believe I think he was talking to the Verge. I'm not sure who he was talking to. But uh, he suggests the company will create its own carefully managed PC ecosystem that is distinct from one of, from the ones offered by other hardware partners. Hmm. Uh, a possibility that our own uh, the, the possibly that they had talked about a while ago. Everybody's been talking about this. For yeah, a while, it's been. It's just everybody's been anticipating this like six ways from Sunday. All right, right? I'm going to go into big picture mode. Grief. All right, so uh, and I know it works under twelve oh four. I haven't tried it under twelve ten because this uh, this laptop's running twelve ten. Yeah, yeah, there it goes. Well, 
It's a little. It's a little. Oh, there we go. And now I'm in big picture mode now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that's funny. The subwoofer is really going. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the big picture mode really gets the sub going that's on this good. laptop. That's cool. So, anyways, uh, I, we'll yeah. see where this goes. And you got to figure if it's running Linux, you're going to have people hacking this thing and oh, loading. Oh, of course. You know. Yeah, it's going to happen. And the, people are already wondering: Is it would Valve launch their own Linux OS? Would you have Valve? Would you have Steam OS, or would they base it on Ubuntu? Um, I would say. Logistically, it's better to run it off Ubuntu because then you can let the Ubuntu guys do all the heavy lifting and just say, yeah. hey, here's our stuff, versus trying to undertake that themselves. Well, and why not benefit. base it on the LTS? And they've yeah. already featured and focused so much on that. You could take all of that investment, all that time yeah. and energy. Partnerships and just... make a better foundation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think this is really an interesting possibility and uh, kind of completes the whole Steam yeah. and Linux picture a little bit because you have uh, – because it also means – it would also mean that if the, if the set-top box is successful mm – -hmm. You don't have to have Linux desktop gaming be just like this massive moneymaker. Right. Because as long as you still have that hardware platform that you are that's Linux based that you need to get games ported to, sure. then the desktop will still get them. Yeah. Even if even if sales aren't as strong as they like. I like we'll it. We'll see. We'll see. I, right. I'm I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm definitely excited to see how all that uh Comes Turns to out. fruition, yeah. All right, Matt, should right we talk ways. a little gnome? Gnomage. So, uh, okay, we've covered this a little bit. You remember, mm -hmm. gnome was talking about getting rid of the old classic fallback mode because yep. it was yep, a lot that to was work. something they opted to do. And then they mm -hmm. said, hey, you know what we think we'll do is, I think what we'll do is we'll come up with a series of extensions. Okay. That will re-implement some of the legacy functionality through extensions. You know, like a window switcher, close and, close and minimize buttons. Okay. Crazy okay. as that is. And a, a, an app launch. It'll be interesting to see how that churns out, but I, at least I, I, I like their trying. That's good. Yeah. So... Through a little bit of magic, they've actually they've built uh, they've built into Gnome Shell. You can now launch Gnome Shell in different modes, mm -hmm. and one of the modes can be the kind of a more classic Gnome mode. Oh, yeah? And uh, so what you'll get is at the login screen. I think yeah. Uh, no, I guess this this article doesn't have a screenshot of it. Okay, but but, but when at, you first log in at you the login, have... you're going to have Gnome and Gnome Legacy. Oh well, that's cool. And okay. Gnome Legacy will be Gnome three, right? But it will be Gnome three set up in a more traditional. Gnome 2 like setup with, okay, with so a taskbar at the bottom, okay. or a window list mm -hmm. bar at the bottom, likely uh, a menu list, uh, all like the that. stuff, and so you'll just you just you just choose that option mm -hmm. from GDM or whatever you're using for your login manager, and boom, you'll just get all that stuff with Gnome. I like that. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. I, I gotta tell you, I, I like the effort. See, good for you guys. You know, I know I've ripped on uh, ripped on Gnome in the past, but I think that's awesome because yeah. they really listened and they found a way to uh, make this doable. That's great. They can also, uh, yeah, I, I think I think it's. You know, people have asked. So, are you guys? So here we go. So yeah. Uh, so here's the here's what the, here's what you go in, when you go in Gnome Legacy mode. You're gonna get App Menu. You're gonna get Places Menu. You're okay. gonna get, you're gonna ch they're gonna change the uh, the uh, Alt Tab switcher, mm -hmm. and you're gonna get uh, some system monitor. Which seems crazy right to me is you get. I mean, I, I, I don't know how they do this now. I guess they, there's no minimize. I, I just Gnome three drives. Yeah, me I, crazy. I, yeah, I don't get that. But so you, here's a screenshot of. So you can see they have a, they have a good app list menu here. They just got it's a standard. Okay, old so they menu. took they they basically they sexied up Gnome two. Is kind of what it feels like. I mean, it's like it literally feels like a kind of a polished uh, version. Is this a statement? Do you think that some of the stuff they tried to accomplish with Gnome three just hasn't really been a success? I think it is. Perhaps I, I, you know, I, I'm, I hesitate to say that. I think possibly that's it. It could also just be, you know, look, we're tired of reading all the rants about it, so yeah. we're gonna throw this out there and say, Gnome three can be, you know, customized to yeah. meet other needs, and that could be it too. I think that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. I think it is that. I think they're still saying, look, uh, we think what we're doing with Gnome three is the right direction. Right. It's right. a foundation for a lot of cool technology. Uh, but we realize that it's just not working for mm -hmm. everybody, sure. and they're and they've come up with I think a pretty clever way to accommodate that. I think so. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I applaud the fact that I mean I don't know how it's going to churn out in the long term, but I think right now that's awesome that they took those steps to say, hey, we heard you. Um, we're not able to just reinvent the wheel, but at the same time, we're going to do our very best to make this something that's palatable for everybody. Yeah, cool. And it's it's not mm -hmm. all the way back to like GNOME two. No, 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 no. It's not. There, it, there's some limitations. It's not mate, but sure. It you know it gets you. It kind of gets you that sweet spot between. The new world and the old. Well, and it's, yeah, and it's cool because they're still saying not. See, Gnome three still got some sexy to it, but it's yeah. still familiar to you. Yeah. Check it out, guys. I think that's cool, man. You know they keep this yeah. up, and and uh, Canonical keeps up this uh, dash crap, and uh, you know that can happen. I might just be running Gnome uh, three seven here. Yeah. Uh, Gnome three PPA done deal. Bam, problem solved. Right there it is. Uh, all right, I want to talk right. about. I want to talk about a game that uh, that uh, I was watching. I hadn't. I I'm, I I'm always of a mixed opinion if we should come on here and promote Kickstarter projects that. 
give like the stretch goal for Linux? Sure. Like if a Kickstarter project looks like it's a great game or something, and it's just like out of the box. Hey, if we hit funding, we're mm-hmm. going Linux. Mm-hmm. Then I'm then I'm really comfortable talking about it on the show. But when they kind of tease you with the Linux support and they kind of well, dangle it, I see it as news relevant as long as we're you know very clear that we're not saying this is going to happen for Linux. We're saying that they're saying it will. There's, well, you know, good news, Matt. <laughs> it looks like they might have reached their stretch goal. Now this yeah. is a game I've been watching. I've been wanting to talk about. It. It's called Limit Theory, Ooh. the infinite procedural space game. Oh, wow. So it's this: you go out in the galaxy and it just yeah. keeps generating. It's it's a never ending game. Oh, okay. So you sit down and it is a it is a game that's supposed to be as big as the universe itself. Whoa. Space combat, like trading, crazy, all this kind of stuff, yeah. right? And uh, they were looking for fifty thousand, and they've hit one hundred and sixteen thousand. They've got thirteen days left to go, and this to me looks really good. You can go to lt or ltheory dot to get mm-hmm, more. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an RPG, RTS, and a sandbox space exploration game all in one. You explore, trade, build, and fight wow. in a beautiful procedural universe. Love and it. they just recently hit their. Uh, they really did a good job here. Lots of video, lots of visual. Yeah, That's great. Yeah, oh, tons of tons of video, uh, ton, tons of video embeds. Um, I don't know. Hmm. You know, I, I so I'm gonna go ahead and say so you got uh, so folks, you got uh, it. They have uh, 13 days left to go. So if you want to get in, you know, sometimes if you get in on the funding, you get some really good deals. Uh, and if you want to grab, if you want to grab this, it's they they they've hit their Linux goal now. So oh, have they? Well. Okay, yeah, yeah. You see right here, they're gonna have uh, yeah. at 100,000, and then they're at 111 right now. At 100,000, they get Mac and Linux. Wow. Uh, if they get to 133, you get planetary ownership, and if they get to 167, you get faction creation and ownership. That's that. That see, that would be cool. So yeah, so I think I think they're probably good to go. Yeah, an open world space simulator, a sandbox nice. game, uh, Twitch based, uh, aim and fire weapon, uh, strategic command an entire fleet when you amass enough cash to purchase more ships. Single player. It's a universe built just for you that no one else will ever get to see, unless you <laughs> choose to share it with them. And it's got a really good look to it too. You know, I, I, I'm right. a sucker for space. Oh, I think it looks gorgeous. Personally, I'd play so, it. All right, you guys can check that out. Again, that was called uh, Limit Theory, an infinite procedural space game, and uh, it's nice. uh, just hit its Linux funding. So, I mean, they've hit, they've, they've, they've surpassed their fifty thousand, right? And now they've surpassed their stretch goal. So now it's just money from here. Love it. And uh, on the topic of Kickstarters, a fan of the show uh, has been doing these uh, great series. This is uh, part five of Kickstarter game development, highlighting games coming to Linux. This time he dives in with the Unity element of things, Unity 3D. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. And talks with the Unity folks about bringing uh, Unity games over to Linux and getting export and porting to Linux. Uh, And they talk about a little bit in here about how uh, you build games using Unity and how the tool set that Unity provides and why it is actually straightforward. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, I know. I look at that and I go, holy crap. I could do that. I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why not, right? I can make a 3D game, no problem. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, it was a, it's a good write up, and uh, Unity is you know like this uh, Rock Hard or Rosh Hard, whatever it's supposed to be. Rosh Hard. Uh, Rosh Hard. Th- what my my current favorite game right now, Unity based yeah. game. Uh, a lot of stuff that coming to Linux is Unity based. A lot of these Kickstarters are Unity based. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if you're curious about Unity and want to know a little bit more about it, this was a great write up that he did. Nice. So we'll put a link to that in the show notes. Anyways, yeah, yeah. You know, someone out there wants to uh, build Linux Action Show the game, eh? we're okay with that. <laughs> Linux Action Show. Sure. You know. what, would that, what would that be? Move the mic what, and that wouldn't play, be a, okay. find the mouse. And... Not a first person shooter. No, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. well, you know. More of an adventure game. You, know, you get like you run around, you get distro power ups, yeah. like distro logos in there. Ding, 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 <laughs> Mario Brothers. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> All right, Matt. Well, that's all the news for this week. Mm. All right, Matt, I want to take a few minutes here and tell everybody about my new beast. Oh, yeah. So this laptop that I purchased is a System76 Bonobo Extreme. Uh, This particular one has a 17.3-inch 1080p display. Gorgeous, gorgeous display. It's got, uh, comes up preloaded with Ubuntu 12.10. Yeah. Of course, you could put any distro on there. Yeah, I suppose yeah. you wanted to. Totally. I, I, I left a 1210 on there. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's got uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's plenty of RAM. <laughs> yeah, it's got the uh, GeForce <laughs> GTX 680M with 4 Man. gigabytes of G, uh, DDR5 RAM. <laughs> Love this part. You ready for this? It's got a 240 gigabyte SSD and a separate 120 gigabyte SSD. So I have an OS drive and applications, and then, and then I have oh. my home partition off on its own separate SSD. And it has some really, it has really great, uh, it has all, you know, uh, Intel wireless and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I, I wanted to get myself a uh, very capable 17-inch laptop that I thought I could use 
for Steam, for oh, yeah. virtualization. I couldn't get over how fast this thing was. I mean, I'm just like, you know, I uh, hey, wife, if you're watching, I want one of these for, <laughs> hey, Christmas. for Christmas. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it actually, you know, the chat room says, chat room says, Chris, that's not enough RAM. Uh, I think it goes up to 32 is what is what you can max it my, at. But, uh, but my desktop runs two. So yeah, I'm just, just going to put that out there. Like, yeah, come on. That's why you use Zubuntu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, so I've broken this down into... Uh, uh, four major sections that I wanted to cover. Yeah. So why don't we why don't we start right here uh, with uh, size and design of this thing? Okay, right, right. it is a big size. It's a big, but it's but it, it's worth it. It's good stuff. It's uh, and uh, let's just get this out of the way. Yeah. First thing in the review, yeah. it is eight point six pounds. Yeah, it, it's it's absolutely a desktop replacement. It is not something you. Yeah, you need you, you a, need to kind of you need to yeah. kind of be mentally prepared for yeah. that. Uh, now I happen to be very familiar with the seventy inch yeah. uh, form factors. That's what I tend to use. It it, it will be replacing uh, this guy right here. Ah, it is replacing <laughs> this uh, HP Envy 17-inch laptop. So I'm going from one 17-inch yeah. laptop to another 17-inch mm -hmm. laptop. Uh, so That's old hat for you. So yeah. yeah, for me, I've yeah. I've sort of just I've 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 just accepted the fact that I have to carry around yeah. you know a bigger laptop for what I do. And I also like the higher res display and. Yep. Multiple drives is great for uh, virtualization on the go, and uh, when you combine SSDs with a Core i7, yep. it's you're gonna have some weight to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just the performance you yeah. get is, is to me is, is so worth it. It's definitely uh, yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, it, now, while we're talking, let's talk a little bit about maybe the design of this thing. Uh, oh, the aesthetics of the frame and everything. Yeah. It's got it's got these rubberized um, armrests. Yes, where you type. And it's it really it's nice. Like if you get if you get a little uh, sweaty armrest, right. uh, a little sweat, sweaty wrist exactly. sometimes, and you and it gets all wet and slippery. Not and a problem nasty. at all yep. with this. Not well, that was the thing I noticed. The texture is yeah. really nice. It was just it felt very natural, and it didn't yeah. feel weird on my wrist when I put it down. Right. It's very very nice, very natural feeling. And then it has this nice metal finish around the keyboard. Yes, which is is sort of a brushed aluminum look to it. A black a black dark brush. Aesthetically aluminum. pleasing. Very, very nice, right? Yeah. Very nice. Uh, and then and then the speaker grill uh, has this nice. Sort of uh, like a speaker bar, perforated like look you might to see it. Yeah. for a TV. But it's very similar to that. Very. I don't cool. know. I don't know how well it'll show up on camera, but I'll, I'll yeah. pick it up for you guys here. But it's got underneath this underneath the display, there is a speaker bar that has sort mm -hmm. of like your hard drive LEDs and your power light and stuff like that. And that whole area is actually it's it's really well done. And what the result is, is that the speakers are pointing right at your face, which is yeah. nice too. Um, which uh, and I've been pretty pretty. And, and it that. puts out, you know I gotta say it, it's it's got some sound in there. Yeah. <laughs> it really does. Yeah, I, it does. I was yeah. impressed. Uh, it also uh, it also has which is I really like this feature, Matt. Is check this out. So I got you know you got uh, you got all these hardware controls. Yeah, like you do on most laptops, right? Right. Got sure. Trackpad disable, uh, projector uh, mode. Mm -hmm. You got uh, you know all your volume all your controls. Stuff, yeah. yeah, your wireless on and off. Mm -hmm. The other thing it's got right here, though, is built-in hardware level uh, backlighting control for the uh, keyboard. Oh. You can see I can adjust the brightness of the uh, backlighting, so I can make it brighter, or I can make it uh, oh, darker. Oh, man. So you have full control over your backlight for your keyboard. I can also change the color. This is all... Wow. So the reason why this is worth mentioning is wow. this is all... Uh, and this is, this is unique, I believe, to yeah. the Bonobo Extreme, is... All of these are hardware based. They're done at the BIOS yeah, level, right? So it, there's no driver in Linux required yeah. in order to manipulate any of these functions, mm -hmm. and it also works in other operating systems as a result. And this is something that I believe System76 specifically worked on to I get, so. to get yeah. working at the BIOS level. It's very nice to have all of that done at the hardware level, and the keyboard backlighting is really nice. It's very well done. I um, mean, there's not bleeding between keys and things like that. It's it's quite well. Well, and System76 does run with a custom BIOS, so they're able to do that sort of stuff. A lot of people don't know that. When you boot up, you have a System76 BIOS that you go into. Yeah. So it's really cool stuff. But yeah, I just it's gorgeous. The screen has a beveled edge around it, which is nice because you oh, can yeah. you can get your finger in there when you when you open it. You know, not like my netbook when I go to open it and it like flops the whole thing over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I I like that quite a bit. Yep. So the design of it is is very good. It's got a it's got a it's got a very good design. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, moving on, the next uh, let's talk about performance, Matt. Oh man! There's so this thing, you know, it's got it's got a good it's got a good it's got a good processor, mm -hmm. and it really I feel like there's nothing that I wait for with this laptop. No, I couldn't get over how fast everything was. I was just like, this thing's faster than most desktops, honestly. The uh, GTX uh, 680M uh, is the provides the best looking graphics I've ever seen. Yeah, uh, it is it is it is very really good, very good, and you combine that with Steam, uh, you get a lot of you get a lot of good games. Uh, dual SSDs means you're killing any. You don't. You don't ever wait for I/O. Mm -mm. But the thing that I was more impressed with is uh, the cooling system. So yeah. it has the way it works is on the bottom of the laptop here. There are uh, 
there, there's fan intakes. There's a few fan intakes. So you can probably see it a little bit. Right. And then it vents out through the these grills on the back. Hmm. And uh, I mean, it's on right now. Yeah. It's yeah, quiet, and I right? can't hear it. I no. thought it was off, actually. <laughs> I didn't even know. Uh, so, and you know, and, and when you when you uh, when you start playing a game, they kick up. Yeah, sure. But it's very reasonable. I very very reasonable. It's much stu- much much quieter than my HP MV. So you would say it's studio friendly as it, far exactly. As, and okay. this was one of my this was one of my my mm-hmm. concerns was that it might be a little on the little on the loud side. Yeah. So no, this is this got a good got a good uh, good co- cooling system that's not it's not loud. Yeah, a gorgeous um, picture. Yeah. And I've really, you know, with with uh, when you have that much GPU horsepower, mm-hmm. it sounds stupid. It sounds ridiculous, but comp is feels like as smooth as it should be. Yeah. Well, I, one of the one of my benchmarks for any computer, because I mean, I've even had fast computers where I go open Software Center. Yeah. And it just bleh, yeah, it's you horrible. Know, just, it's it horrible. just pukes. This thing was just, I it just bam, yeah. bam, bam. There's nothing bam. you throw at it that it it doesn't it doesn't. I was doing that in Steam. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it really doesn't. It really, I I accidentally at one point launched uh, two. 3D games accidentally, wow. and I was like, didn't even realize that I had the other game open in the background. <laughs> <That's> awesome, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it. yeah until you get I, two mice in there, you could, <laughs> yeah. Well, I closed it, and I realized, oh, I have this other game going too. Uh, I mean, we're talking awesome. r- really good performance there, and the cooling is is great. I've tried the, uh, I not not extensively, but I've done a little bit of the because it does have fans on the bottom. I was worried <laughs> that like if I had it on, like in my lap on my lap on a right. blanket. So I wasn't feeling good last night, so I was sure. all wrapped up in a blanket, and yeah. I had this thing on there, and I and I was playing rock hard. I I never. I never noticed like it having any heat issues. I've got thermal monitoring going, and it never really seemed to have any problems. That. With well, that. and the fact that you're not bound to with a lot of laptops, you're bound to having to invest into a uh, cooling pad. And because this is so well designed for proper uh, ventilation and cooling, you don't have to worry about that. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so cool. The uh, some some noticeable notable things is Wi-Fi yeah. Wi-Fi performance. I this is the first laptop where I've used it and I thought, geez, the Wi-Fi is really good. So I'm out. I've oh, yeah? I pretty much have exclusively used this laptop on Wi-Fi since I got it, which I almost never do. I'm almost always an Ethernet right. guy. <laughs> uh, I'm getting around 78 to 177 megabits in my transfer nice. rate. It's eight nice. or two eleven. So yep, you got your power management at work for you there. It sounds like it That's connects good. immediately on wake up. Like it's mm-hmm. instantly connects to the wireless. It's it's nice. sort of like the tablet in that respect. It's just on. This, I think that's attributable to the new Intel Centrinos. Yeah, uh, it does have the front facing uh, Anoko or Nokia speakers. It also has, funny enough, a little subwoofer built into the bottom of the laptop. Ooh, boom, so boom, boom. it's like not that. it's nothing it's nothing like a outrageous. yeah you're not yeah you're not getting punched in the back with it, but it's no, but it's got it's got some uh, sub there. It sounds good, you know. I I uh, I was pretty impressed with it. The games definitely sound good. It's got uh, four USB 3.0 ports, one eSATA port, port, uh, HDMI out, and Display mm-hmm. Port out. No VGA or DVI. It's Display yeah. Port or HDMI. Modern out. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, uh, like I mentioned, it has all the keyboard controls there. and that trackpad. Man, that trackpad is just. Unbold. Yeah, it's got it's got a good trackpad. It's got I mean, it's like a gamer's trackpad. This is not some little rinky dinky thing. I'm talking about like you can yeah. trackpad with your fist on this thing. It's great. Yeah, it's got a pretty good <laughs> trackpad on there, and yeah. uh, it's got a good texture to it. It's texturized, and uh, it's a Synaptics trackpad. Nice. So it's uh, it's got uh, multi touch. So you scroll okay. by just uh, by just double finger, double fingering down it, mm-hmm. and uh, it it's got a really nice feel to it. And I still prefer a mouse. Over a trackpad, and uh, that's still the tr- case with this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I tend to usually plug a mouse in myself. But, but I would say this is probably the best trackpad next to a MacBook Pro, like one of the more later yeah. later model MacBook Pros. They have pretty good trackpads. Well, I like and the tactile feel to it. it just yeah, feels, that's nice. That for me, that's part of the reason why I don't like tra- normal trackpads is because they don't feel right. Yeah, yeah, that is really weird. nice. Uh, and cool. it has it has all of your uh, media port, you know, like your uh, SD card reader ports and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. There are th- a few things to consider when you're looking at a laptop like this, though. Uh, it is 8.6 pounds, so it's heavy, yep. and you need to consider that. Uh, the, and uh, and so what? Like uh, I have, uh, I got uh, myself this bag here. Oh, nice! And it fits in this. If, if this is a backpack yeah. uh, laptop bag, and it fits in this bag just fine. But you know, my old bag that I had, it didn't fit in. Oh yeah. So I had to change bags. So that's something that I had to consider, and, and luckily I was prepared for that. But you know, you put in you put in a in a backpack, and it it's actually it's quite it's quite. Uh, whoa! Hi there. Hi. Right. Ah, who cares about that? It's just a video card match. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. All right. So I got to tell you about the biggest con. All right. What's the biggest con? The biggest negative to this laptop. And, you know, there's just certain things you have to expect when you're dealing right. with a laptop of this size. When you're dealing with the desktop replacement, yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. This laptop has the biggest power brick I've ever seen in a laptop. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't believe this. this is awesome. I see. I think this is cool because it's like all novelty size. It's great. It is. Uh, it's it's awesome. big. I mean, it's not unmanageable. Yeah. 
But it's about the size of an Xbox 360 power yeah, supply. Yeah, I mean, it is one. very big. And uh, But, you know, it's, it takes a lot of power to power this thing. So, you know, I mean, if you're going to charge that up and actually maintain your uh, battery life, it uh, takes some power. So, yeah, you know, low, it's low it, power. It's 300 watts. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it's a very powerful yeah. laptop. And, uh, you know, that's part, that's part of the game you play when, you deal, when you're dealing with a laptop this size. And I, you know, this just, I just have to acknowledge that. Yeah. I, I will uh, point out, too, that this is a small thing, but this yeah. laptop has the uh, power port in the back right. and the HDMI out in the back. And those are probably going to be the most common connections that I use because I'll be on right, live. Right. So I love having those cords come out the back of the laptop. So that would be a that would side. be a benefit, I think, yeah. Yes. I really like I really like the placement of those ports. So uh, while the size of the power brick is definitely not ideal. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, when you already you already have to accommodate a laptop of this size. Sure. So accommodating the power yeah. brick is you not, almost kind of expect it at yeah. that point because it is truly it's it's yeah. all about power. Yeah. So. It's 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 a very manly power brick. I'll yeah. just put it that yeah, way. It's, yeah, it's yeah, none of this panty waste. Little I was trying to think stuff. of a good way to describe it for the audio listeners in size. What it's comparable to, and the best thing I, it's not it's not as long as right. an Xbox 360 controller, but it's as wide. Yeah, uh, as, no, as a power it's brick. It, it's uh, it, yeah. it's definitely it's definitely a brick. I mean, it's like if you look at like a laptop uh, power supply versus a netbook power supply, there's also a size difference there too. Yeah, like with my Triple E, you know, or some of the other ones. So I mean, it, you know, it, it's kind of if you've ever run a desktop and had your system underpowered, you understand the importance of having enough power. So it's okay. It takes just a regular PC power yeah, cord, which too. is cool. It's actually kind of nice because I sit down at like nice I thing. sit down at a client and I just bam. You know, there's always a ton of those cords. Yeah, there. right. I mean, it's like oh, yeah. I forgot cord. Who cares? Yeah. Click. You know. Uh, so of course, another con when you're dealing with a laptop with uh, with parts like this is battery life. For me, around my in my testing, yeah, has been around four hours. That's pushing it pretty significantly. That's actually better than I ante I anticipated because of its size and the fact that it's got the dedicated graphics, dedicated sound, all this dedicated stuff going on. I figured it'd been about like what two and a half hours. Yeah, but it's got four. a Sound Blaster XFI in it. Yeah, so it's got, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's got. It's got a serious, a serious little sound system. So the biggest offender wow. is I got that Nvidia card. I mean, that Nvidia card yeah, is just that's ridiculous. Where you're it. Yeah, it's, that's... It is ridiculous in how much power that. Nvidia but the card fact draws. you're still getting four hours out of it's actually surprising for its size. Yeah, that's I really. I, that's I really, I mean, for me, it's not. Uh, I, the battery for me needs to last long enough to move it from the office to the yeah. studio. Yeah. Or, you know, four hours is plenty for what I use this thing for. True. If if, yeah. if portability and battery life are a key requirement, this is probably not the laptop you're looking for. And have you tried uh, the, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of it now, the uh, pa uh, power management tool, uh, laptop tools or whatever they call power it. Power top? Power top. Or no, that's the mo that's to actually see your results. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, the, uh, it's oh, right. The stuff we talked about. Yeah, the stuff we talked about. You know, I haven't, you know, because. Because uh, it does make a big difference. In, I, in I just, I, I, no, I mean, we're talking these, my benchmarks are screen is oh, totally okay, okay. bright. I've sure, sure, sure. played some 3D games. Yeah, right, like that. I mean, right, right. we're talking, I was not trying to save battery. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, because it really, the battery, it's a removal battery. So if that oh, was okay. an issue for me, I would just buy another battery. But sure, uh, sure. It's, not, it's not. Oh, yeah. That's a no brainer then. Uh, so and I would say so you wow. know four hours is a rough estimate. Uh, when I I would probably I probably played uh, let me see because most of that I played. That's I, I, yeah I I gotta say for trying. for something that powerful that's actually uh, that's impressive. So I played I played trying for an hour on battery, but and then mm -hmm. I went and then I just went back and did some some. So it was an hour of gaming, okay, and then uh, another few hours of just screwing around on the internet and stuff like that. It's not too shabby. No, not no. bad, and and yeah. perfectly acceptable for what I was yeah. looking for. Um, I for mean, what it is, yeah. To, to be perfectly honest, I I would not be happy with it. But if the laptop if the battery only lasted fifteen minutes in my use case, that'd be fine. Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, all right, so th but those would say so. Those are some of the things I would consider on right. the negative of this laptop. Uh, but uh, I definitely would uh, overall give it a recommend. I think uh, when you combine the performance, the build <laughs> yeah. quality of this is really fantastic. Yeah, I can't get over the hinges. How just none of these panty waist hinges like you see on a lot of notebooks. This thing is serious. Right, and it's got uh, it's got sort of like a beveled, tapered edge. Yeah. I mean, it looks very. Visually, it looks like a very high-end piece of equipment. It does. Uh, everything yeah. down to just the way those LED lights are. Mm -hmm. it, it feels business class. This is an yeah. enterprise class yes. desktop replacement. Yeah, great way to put it. I, yeah. I look at I look at I even I look at uh, the. You mentioned it on the on the yeah. on the live. The freaking power button, even it's gorgeous. Even the power <laughs> oh. button. So, uh, the, oh, uh, one other thing. I haven't tried the uh, the fingerprint scanner. Uh, it, it supposedly works. It shows it uh, It shows up on the system, but I've, sure. never, I've never tried right, it. Right, right. Oh, the number pad. The fact that it, because it's a desktop replacement, you have a proper 10 key. Mm -hmm. Bam. That is nice, too. That's cool. I would say uh, the desktop is dead, but not because of any girly tablets. It's because this thing murdered the desktop. This really yeah. is a desktop replacement. Right. Uh, and it, it, that's what it's going to be for me. I will be transitioning from a desktop to this as my primary machine. Absolutely. This is my main rig now. And... Uh, uh, I I I find myself now frustrated 
with the other computers in my house because they are so slow. Right. It's exactly. sort of it's sort of it sort of changed my perspective on what to expect. Right. I just right. It, just within two weeks of using this thing, I'm already I want to just replace all the other computers in my house. Which oh I, yeah, I could never well, totally. afford to do. But. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. Totally. Yeah. Well, and a lot of people are thinking, well, you know, don't they just like buy it from some some company and like then just resell it? No, 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 no. They actually have an R and D R and D department that actually goes through each individual component, looks at its longevity, looks at all the different things, how they interact, and actually, and oftentimes will customize the innards themselves, going down to selecting the video cards, selecting the different uh, components, and also making sure that all the stuff in there is brand name. Yeah. Um, it's there's a lot of people are confused with that, but it's I wanted to point that out. This is and a custom BIOS to boot. This is not. Not just a stock thing yeah. that they slapped a boon to on and said, "Here you go." You no, know, no. I no, no. <laughs> Before this, after I ordered it, I thought, you know, what if I don't like it? Yeah. I thought, what if it's loud? Yeah. Uh, you know, what if it what if it overheats? Because yeah. it really like it doesn't yeah. get it doesn't really seem to get hot either. Right. Um, and and none of those none of those really panned out, which I'm really relieved about. Yeah. And I, I the System Seventy Six didn't give this to me. I I paid full yeah, price right. for this, and uh, they didn't even know I was getting it until I'd ordered it. Right. And, right. Uh, uh, I think it's probably my favorite purchase of the year. I, yeah, I really this think, is really, really gorgeous. I mean, like I, I, I think I'll see. My, I see myself using this for years. I would think so. Yeah, it's uh, powerful enough. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's definitely it's it's spare battery wouldn't be wouldn't hurt, but yeah, yeah. The battery life the, that would probably be the battery life would probably be the thing that would be nice because I could see for some folks that'd be for me it's not going to be. A well, big I deal, think it depends on what you're using for. I mean, for what it's designed for now, because you're pretty much you're you're plugged into the wall. I mean, really, yeah, most of the time I would think for because it is a desktop replacement. But you know, yeah. it's funny because the last two weeks that I've been out here. I've been running it on battery, so it's funny. I, yeah. say I don't I don't use the battery that often, but, but ironically, you kind of have been lately. Yeah. I have been, yeah. So, right, right, right. but it, it lasts through the whole show. Sure. Uh, and so, I also thought I would see how it's worked as just a, so. System seventy six machines come with what's called a system seventy six driver, right? And they put a deb out there, and you just pull down the deb, and then you run the system seventy six yep. utility, and it goes out and gets like drivers, and exactly. it, it applies little fixes like. You know, have you ever had a machine where like the the boot logo doesn't display yep. correctly? It fixes all that kind of or, stuff. Or you know, suspend resume. Let's say let's say Ubuntu borks something. This is the difference between mm -hmm. buying it from uh, just a regular vendor and then buying it from them. Let's say Ubuntu borks like something an update or something. Yeah, like an update borks something. They will that system seventy six driver. They if they need to actually address that, and it's not going to be taken care of in the kernel. You know, here in recent future, they will actually address that in the uh, update driver, and they take care of that for you. That's how they can ensure right. that it's always working. But That's I, a big difference. I was curious: so. is could I run Linux on here? With Without that, yeah. right? Because I wanted to know if if I was dependent on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I wiped it. I, I was I didn't know if I wanted to wipe it because I got it all set up just perfect. But sure. I really wanted to answer that question. Sure. And uh, yes, you don't actually have to have that System seventy six driver at all. Everything right. in here is there's kernel level support yeah. for well, it. And, and Linux has come so far; it's made that really fantastic. Yeah. The only Absolutely. the only gotcha is the NVIDIA card is so new <laughs> yeah. that the uh, the Nuvu driver doesn't work great with right. it. Right. But it works, you know, you get full you get full resolution, you mm -hmm. get everything working, and then you could go get the NVIDIA driver. In my case, I just went and got the System76 package, and it just got everything else Exactly. For it doesn't but work for you. I was, I, you know, I, I could just as easily load Fedora on this, sure. or OpenSUSE, or Arch Linux, uh, as, as Ubuntu 12.10. That's right. I happen to want to use Ubuntu 12.10 because I'm crazy like that, but I was really relieved by that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also loaded Windows 8 on there, it took that off, but I was curious sure. to see how that would work. And it, it turns out uh, it, it actually is certified to run Windows 8. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. cool. Um, and it has uh, EFI and all that kind of stuff. Right. The uh, two drive bays in here, you know, I have dual SSDs. If I go into the BIOS, there's actually also an option to RAID those drives. Oh, so that's kind of cool. I, yeah. don't know if, I don't know if Ubuntu supports that, um, and I don't want that because I have right. two different size drives, and one's for home and one's for exactly. and VMs. Uh, but it is an option. So if you wanted to get this with two drives, you could you could raid them That's at the BIOS, cool. which is kind of neat. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I have to say that the Bonobo Extreme I'm very 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 happy with, and uh, it's it's definitely a recommend I, if you're looking for yeah. something that gets great performance that uh, is going to play Steam games and. Uh, yeah, this is a gaming laptop. Absolutely. I, I think System Set. I wish System Seventy Six could uh, sort of position themselves as the the Steam premier steaming gaming platform company because like this is i think they're kind of edging that way i mean think you look between the uh, what was it the leopard extreme and uh, yeah. the water cooled wondrous yeah. wondrous machine yeah. and then of course yeah. the uh this uh this uh, notebook here yeah. you know i uh, kind of think they might be 
maybe get a little pre-installed action there once it uh, comes live. I could see them maybe finagling something like that. Yeah. Could happen. So, you know, uh, I guess to sum it all up, uh, it is uh, it is uh, maybe one of my favorite laptops I've ever gotten. I think it is my favorite laptop I've ever gotten. Um, just from everything, from the build quality to the performance to yep. the ease yep. of use that everything works out of the box. And... Uh, you know, obviously, I'm biased in the terms that I really like System76 as a company, but the right. idea that I can buy a laptop from a vendor who is supporting Linux... Exactly. exactly. I think that's great, too. And they haven't paid me to review this. They no. haven't, they're not. They're not sponsoring this segment. That's just my honest, genuine opinion about this. And I think if you bought this, if you're okay with the weight, yep. and uh, you can accommodate the size, um, I think you would be very happy with it. Uh, the, uh, you know... It's got a two megapixel. I just one th one more thing I want to mention. It does have a webcam. It's not amazing. It's a two megapixel yeah, webcam. It's a, yeah, it's built into a laptop, of course. Yes, yeah. yeah, certainly. Uh, and uh, boy, is there anything else I should mention on it, Matt? I think that's really the the meat and potatoes of it. Um, you know, that big thing is when you're buying from companies like this, you're uh, you're actually saying, hey, we want to see you know this become mainstream. And so that's yeah. that's important, but it's a great it's a, I mean th it's a great unit. I mean it's I'm very jealous. <laughs> I you know I I, one. I I sat I yeah. I, I thought I was thinking about it last night. I was like, how do I come onto the show and and glow about this yep. without sounding biased or like I'm right, like I'm right, selling right, right. because this is like I walk into my office and I see this I see this sitting on my desk and I just smile because I'm like, oh yeah, I really like my new laptop. Right. You know, I really am happy with this thing. So it's it's a great machine. And if you've been thinking about getting a new laptop. Definitely recommend this. Now, yeah. depending on how you tweak it, you can get pretty up there in price. So that's also something else. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no, there's no question to that. But it's definitely, and I've had a, we both had a long history with the company and been very, long before I ever came to LAS, I've been a very happy customer. I still run one of their older notebooks, actually. Yeah. Never missed a beat. So there you go. Yeah. That's the Linux Action Show's look at the Bonobo Extreme. Yeah. And that brings us to the end of this week's broadcast. Matt, before we get out of mm. here, I think we should do a little feedback. Actually, I, when I say little, I mean a lot. It's like our biggest feedback yeah. segment ever. Emma. Tons of feedback. And uh, now, before we get to that, I, we uh, System76 is a, is, a, is sponsoring this segment of the Linux Action Show. Oh, feedback. And I, check this out. So this is their uh, this is their Sable Complete machine, right? They're all in one PC. Gorgeous. Now, uh, oh, why am I a bad person? I didn't get his name. I'm such a bad. Oh, uh, Sis Admin Chris. Boy, you think I'd remember yeah, that? Good. Sis Admin Chris uh, submitted <laughs> pictures of his Sable. Uh, look at look at that. You know what's cool? It looks like a little stick man. You know, with like speaker hands mounted to the wall. It's like cool. a standing station. I love it. I love this idea. Very minimalist. Very uh, very tidy. I like that. Looks very good, right? I love and cable management. What cable management? <laughs> it's like man. Yeah, he's right? really done. He's, he's tightened that up nice. That, look at that. he's got all the he's got all the wires mm -hmm. in in tracks. Uh, you know what? Here's I could take a lesson from this from this person. I, he really did a good job. I want him to come into the studio and like set set one up over the oh, corner. No over kidding, there or right? Yeah, well, and then come over to my home office and help me out. Yeah, yeah I like help. that. So uh, look, if you guys have a System seventy six machine, I want to see a picture of it. I don't, it doesn't have to be as fancy as this. If no, it, it, it could be a decent picture from your cell phone of your laptop for all I can. Yeah. I just think this yeah. is a great idea. So take pictures and send them into Linux Action Show at JupiterBroadcasting.com. We'll show mm -hmm. them when we're doing the System76 yeah. read. And, you know, that's a great use for the uh, Sable Complete, really. Uh, mounted on the wall. It's why not? It's got, you can, because that foot that it's on actually comes off. Yeah, it is. And it's very iMac-like uh, experience. It's not touchscreen, of course, but it is a very much an all-in-one complete machine. Mm -hmm. Everything you could possibly want uh, for a really decent desktop experience. Yeah, it's nice for the home PC. Very, very gorgeous looking. Yeah. Just yeah. absolutely. Oh, and uh, you know, Mark Shuttleworth actually had uh, commented on it too at once at a recent event and said that is damn good looking machine. He was really impressed with it. <laughs> ran, from what I understand, ran his fingers across it and everything. There was uh, there was even talking involved. <laughs> it was good stuff. <laughs> All right, yeah. Matt. Why don't we get to our first email because we got to help some people out here. Yep. 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 This one comes from Robert, and he's having some IP troubles. He says, hi, Chris uh -oh. and Matt. I have a question, which is probably more towards TechSnap, but I have to find an answer quickly, so mm -hmm. we can't wait till Thursday, uh -oh. I guess. Okay. I decided to ask here and last. So I like how he's got all of our show schedules figured he's out. He's got it all figured so out. So he knows yeah. if i got to get hey. an answer quick, I send it to this show. That's thinking. Uh, That's I've thinking. changed my internet plan and was supplied with a new cable modem for my ISP. Mm -hmm. With my previous setup, my default gateway was 192.168.1.1. Sure. Uh, with the new setup, the default gateway is 192.168.0.1. This is causing a problem with my IP mm. security cameras as they were expecting to see 1.1 and not 0.1. I cannot change this IP to, in the gateway. Huh. I contact my ISP, but they can't change it either. What can I do to fix this problem? Outside of custom Robert, firmware? I don't know. This is your department. I'm not sure how. I mean, unless you've got something custom, you can flash to the... That's what I would say is if you yeah. can do a custom firmware or maybe just don't use that. Uh, so here's the thing. This is very hacky. 
but this oh. would probably work, is if you just threw up a DHCP server on your network, it's there's a chance it's going to be faster than your router. Oh, yeah. Because no, routers yeah. are... And the way DHCP yeah. works, whoever answers fast gives out the IP. Mm -hmm. You might also look at doing something like PFSense. Uh, PFSense is a router replacement software, so if you have an old PC in your house, you would good. take that and you would put that in front of your cable modem, and then that would hand out the IPs, and you could have that be any IP scheme you want. It's all web. Uh, that would solve the problem, really. Yeah. And that's not too hackish. That's actually a really good project. Right. You just yeah. just just hang the cable modem off of one port on the old machine, mm -hmm. and then your LAN off the other port, and then have that do that for you. Uh, that would that would be. I really like PFSense, so that yeah. would be my preferred solution. Just um, basically, just get some nicks, make a click, and you're good to go. Right. That's what she said. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so there you go. Uh, hopefully, Robert. That uh, I know that's a tough thing because you get everything mm -hmm. all set. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. especially when you're already set up. It's yeah. just like really. Yeah. But basically, what you have to do, Robert, is you need something you have control over. Yeah. If you if you want to be able to change what your uh, default gateway is, or you want to change what your IP scheme is, then what you need to do is use something that gives you mm -hmm. that control. I think you'll so. be happier for it. Really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Felix, aka the real Zarniags, <laughs> in the chat room, says uh, he's got a router question too. So I put I grouped these ones together. Oh, cool. These two together. Okay. He says uh, I'm a reasonable. I'm a reasonably intelligent guy, and I've regarded quite the geek for years. Still, though, there's questions that really bug me. Number one, I need a new router. The old ones really can't handle 10 megabits, especially not if you're uh, downloading torrents and such. Yeah, boy, do I know that one. <laughs> the problem is, of course, that there's an abundance of routers on the market, and I haven't got a clue what to go for. I haven't got a lot of money, so cheaper is better, and since I don't, I don't need a cross-country Wi-Fi connection, I think it should be doable. So your advice is much appreciated. Two things that come to mind. This is what I do at home. Um, for my, I, I, for one thing, I do my routing and my wireless completely separate because it's amazing, but you don't have to reboot it every 10 minutes when it's not overheating. So <laughs> I like separation. Um, for routers, I've had really good luck with an Australian company called Draytech. Um, I, I think it's a Vigor something or another. Um, I, it's, it's a little pricey, but you can wrap that thing up in foam, stick it in an oven, and you're still not going to overheat that puppy. It's just, and the performance is really solid. Get your firmware updated. I've been real happy with it. I don't know if you have another recommendation, but it's like a that. Soho router. I know. like that. Or go PFSense again. If you got a, ah, you said he was looking for budget. You if you've got yeah. a spare PC, then you just, that's actually that. better. That's actually even better. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, now this one's a little tricky, Matt. You and I were just talking about mm. this recently. Uh, Al writes in. He's got uh, some uh, audio over HDMI problems. He says, first up, love the show. Keep on trucking. I've recently built an HTPC out of spare parts. Mm -hmm. I'm using Ubuntu 1204.1, and the big Unity buttons work well on a TV. Mm -hmm. I've gotten everything to work properly except sound. I have an NVIDIA uh, 210 GT connected to my TV by HDMI. Video and audio both work. The problem is the audio setting won't save. No matter how many times I go to system settings, yeah. sound, output, and tell it to use HDMI audio, it never remembers it after a reboot. I've used my Google food, but I have not found the answer. Uh, two things that come to mind. The easiest, least hacky, annoying version, and, and it may not stick after a reboot. Uh, well, it sh actually should stick after a reboot as long as you don't unplug anything. Uh, the Pulse Audio uh, Control Panel, whatever the hell I call it, the PAV Dev Chooser or whatever yeah. it is. Um, that actually, first of all, yeah, my, my first rule anytime you're using uh, the sound settings that come with Linux is to ignore them. Always go with the chooser. And you should be able to select your HDMI settings there, and it should stick on reboot as long, long as you don't unplug your HDMI. Yep. Um, as long as you don't unplug that while it's turned on or you know any of that kind of stuff, you should be okay. Otherwise, I think you have to go a little old school and generate an Xorg and then actually tweak that, I believe, if I remember from when I last time I looked. The other option I was but, thinking you know, is there's you know you can you can set your output device on the command line. Yeah, yeah, to, that's there's true. Pulse audio. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. he could do like a he could do like could a little do a script, bash yeah. script that yeah, runs when he logs in. That, that would that would, would actually be ideal because then you just throw it in an auto start. And I like your idea of getting pulse audio the, the 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 Pavu control though. Yeah, it's a it's a real newbie, easy, friendly, non you know if you're not really if you want just kind of a, a nice visual approach to it, that's one way of doing it, yeah. and it will work. The key to remember is to remember that your de your default settings are very different than your playback settings. You want to make sure that you're actually running whatever it is you're running in Pulse Audio's uh, chooser and while it's running, then make the selection because mm -hmm. in playback it won't always show up. Mm -hmm. Same thing with recording. Mm -hmm. So, okay, kind of can remember that. John writes in with a very yeah. interesting find: uh, security at its finest. He says from mm. a woman from a nation that hacked the J uh, Oracle's Java. Oh, wow. uh, she's quite talented. It's called Cubes OS, and then go to cubes-os.org. Here's what's really interesting about this. Uh, it's an open source operating system designed to provide strong security for desktop computing. It's based on Zen. Okay. X Windows systems and Linux. Hmm. It runs most Linux applications and utilizes most of Linux drivers. Cubes uh, 
is it's like uh, it's like isolation inside virtualization. It's it's virtualization at the application level, uh, I guess. Hmm. Um, I've That's just I just looked into it when he sent it in there, but it implements security by isolation approach. To do this, Cube utilizes virtualization technology to be able hmm. to isolate various programs from each other and even sandbox many system level components like networking or storage subsystems so that uh, their compromise does not affect the integrity of the rest of the system. Oh, okay. Cubes lets the user define many security domains implemented as a lightweight virtual machines or app VMs. Uh, a user can create personal or work or shopping or banking mm -hmm. or, or random app VMs and then use applications from within those VMs and as if they're executing on the same local machine. But at the same time, they're all isolated from each other. Right. Cube supports secure copy and paste and file sharing between app VMs, of course. I, this, is, this is fascinating to Isn't me. this yeah. really interesting? It's like people I mean, like trying to absorb all this. It's just like, whoa. We've had people <laughs> that have written in like uh, to TechSnap who've said wow. that they want to create like this ultimate you know, way to do online banking when they're doing really, yeah. really high dollar amount transactions right. yeah, and yeah, they're yeah, paranoid. Yeah, no kidding. This seems like this might be uh, an interesting solution for that. It, could be. So you have, you could throw Thunderbird and Chrome in their own VM and you could throw, uh, you know, whatever else in their it's own very VM. compartmentalized. I yeah. like that. I like that word too. I, I don't know if it would be great ideal mm. for just regular everyday use. Might be a little much, but I think for high security uh, stuff, I think it's something worth really exploring. Yeah. I mean, you know. Uh, you know, I forgot to mention that... Uh, uh, the uh, that Felix, or I'm sorry, uh, aka the real Zarniak, also yeah. wanted to know if we had any recommendations for a tablet. Uh, mm. Said he's considering investing in a fairly cheap Galaxy Tab for some time now, uh, but uh, he doesn't want to run uh, Android. Right? He thinks Android's <laughs> crap, <laughs> and uh, he wants to run Arch on there. And he wants to know if we have any tablets that we know about that he could load his own OS on. Ah. Uh. You know, the Nexus 7 is one to watch. Yeah, yeah. And the other one, another one that might be one to watch is the, the ZA tab, the Zotab. Yeah, tab. I was going to say probably a ZA reason for tablet probably be your only option uh, that I can think of that's really unlocked that they might. I, I That's probably. That's kind of its thing. That's yeah. its main feature. Is that so you, you can, can do that and just check Amazon, see if there's anything else that's uh, unlocked. You, you know? can say no OS. Uh, yeah. But see, the problem with this, the, my big problem with the Z ZA it's tab is. It's kind of expensive. Yeah, 350 bucks. And uh, if I recall, the resolution's, yeah, it's 1240 by 768. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it might be worth having a conversation, see, see what Yeah, but you know, the, but it's nice. Yeah. You could, you I could, mean, you you could ask them large. the question and they could tell you and actually know what you're talking about. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. All right, Matt, uh, the next one. Uh, Erno's got the perfect desktop. He says, hey, guys, first of all, uh, you've won me back to the show. Matt brings an appropriate level of energy to each episode. The show previously lost my interest because it seemed a bit over the top and showy. Anyways, I look forward to each episode, and I really enjoy the content. Secondly, there's been a lot of conversations happening about desktop environments. Mm -hmm. Boy, isn't that true? And I have to say that I have had my fair share of hopping around. Mm -hmm. For me, the perfect setup includes Enlightenment E17 on Sabion, with most of my preferred applications pulled from KDE. Mm. It is stable, fast, and super responsive. Maybe one of these days you can do a review of E17. Thanks for the great content. Don't hate the idea. I, you know, maybe we're overdue for that. Yeah, they're supposed to, you know, that. I, I, would, I want to catch them at their best. It's so supposed to release kind of the one O is supposed to release soon for E seven. That might be the time to look I at it. So. Yeah, I think once so. that's gone, because then they're then they're prime time ready. It's like, yeah. so let's take a look. You know, uh, and uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty interesting desktop. All right, yeah. uh, Hacker O White writes in with some partitioning questions. Dear Lass, I've been enjoying your show for the past few months, and I have yeah. to say, I really appreciate your distro reviews and app picks. Because you've shown me how great Linux is, I thought I'd install it on my new HP Pavilion M6 1040DX. Boy, I love that name. Yeah. Uh, it's an entertainment PC with Intel Core i5 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, and it's got a 2.5 gigahertz processor. Mm. However, I ran into a few problems. My computer came with four partitions on it. A system partition, HP Tools partition, the C drive, the D drive which is a recovery partition. Oh, yeah, they're still doing that. Uh, and he was hoping he... Yeah, I know, right? He was hoping he could merge some of the partitions together without breaking anything. No. Do you have any advice? I First of all, uh, you know... I personally, and now that's not to say you can't. If you you can you can as long as you can first go and make sure that you can recover these things from a tool that they provide on their website yeah. before you break them. Once you understand that, you may in fact work everything because I don't know. At one time, HPs were weren't they doing like a like almost a BIOS kind of thing on a hidden partition sort of hidden. You I, launch it like they have yeah, like a BIOS weird. option that launches it and loads the yeah. stuff on the partition. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Okay, so yeah, I mean, so it, it, you might actually bork stuff. I so, don't ever use that because I, it reloads it with all their junk too. Personally, I would look at. I mean, is this a desktop, laptop? What yeah, it's a desktop. It's a desktop. Just get another hard drive, man. I mean, yeah. <laughs> honestly, if you cheap can, enough. that would be the way to yeah, go. Yeah, I mean, and if you can't, then you might look at. 
Poor, First of all, uh, you know, I say tough. ask yourself, do you need those recovery yeah. software? Is, is all the yeah. stuff on those recovery partitions going to be out of date? In but are they interconnected in such a way that we're, you know, HP is really easy to bork? I mean, you know, you can... Are you going to bork something by removing it? So I think yeah. if you can if you can re, if you can put it back on there easily enough and you feel comfortable with it, bork the whole thing and see what it does. Yeah, and something else you might try <laughs> is you know yeah. back up. So uh, Ghost for Linux or yeah uh, yeah yeah That's or something like idea. that. That would be a really good idea. Or uh, Clonezilla, I think. Yeah. Yep, Clonezilla would be another great choice. Uh, and then you get those. So then you can you'll have those partitions and you can write them back if you you know you discover it really does need. Yeah, them. that's a great idea. Yeah. So yeah, back up the partitions and then and then get willy nilly. You know, obviously make sure your partitions work first. But you know. All right, Greg's got one that I don't think we have an answer for. Mm. Uh, maybe we do. Okay, but if, the, if, we, if we don't, maybe the audience will, because I would love to know this. Maybe okay. you have heard of something, Matt. But Greg oh, writes in, either. he says, uh, despite having three TVs around the house, I watch all the TV on my computer using a TV tuner mm -hmm. and TV time. But there are times when I have to move and I don't want to miss the program I'm watching. Is oh. there a way to stream TV to my Android tablet from his Linux desktop? If it can't be done through apps, fine. If I have to buy a device to do this, so be it. If it helps, I use PC Linux OS, and the tablet is a Nook tablet with 16 gigs running yeah. Jelly Bean. Thanks in advance. So he's looking for a way I'm thinking, to I've send got... video from the desktop right. and stream it to the Android device. I app on here. I'm wondering if Juice might... Because uh, I've not tried it, but... Uh, Possibly, and I'm probably wrong on this, but a juice for Android. I know that I'm able to take uh, media, and I think it might handle streams, um, something like juice. Outside of that, now, I don't know. That's a tough one. I mean, because mm. for myself personally, and I'm kind of weird like this, I just run a Roku box and I just watch live stream <laughs> there. Um, Chat room is saying uh, VLC know? could do this. VLC, oh yeah, and oh, totally right. There is, yeah. is there, there's VLC for Android, right? Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah, I have it on my phone actually. So I guess you could there's uh, two, uh, two VLC options. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. That'd probably be the way to do it. Because then mm. you have complete control over yeah VLC. Mm. Yeah. Bam. There you go, Greg. Uh, try that and let us know how it goes. All right, last couple of questions, Matt. We're rounding, we're rounding cool. them out here. Mark writes in. He wants to mount his Nexus 7 on Linux. Hi, Chris and Matt. I'm a longtime listener and a fan of the shows, but let me be the first to say that I love the shows and all the work you guys do over Jupiter Broadcasting. Mm -hmm. You guys do an amazing job. Well, thank you. Cool. Appreciate Gives us, that. He's even given us a standing applause here. I love here. that. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Awesome. So his question is this. I've recently moved away, uh, moved to a Nexus 7 from a generic Android tablet. I'm loving the device and everything it can I, I can do I can do. It feels so fast and amazing. I tell mm -hmm. people it's in beast mode. Anyways, <laughs> my only problem is that I haven't been able to find a good simple way of connecting to my Ubuntu 1204 box for file transfers. Currently I'm using Dropbox to move files between the top to, to, between the devices. Right. I would really like to connect it via USB and have more control and faster transfer speeds. Uh, the I ran into this with my phone because it wasn't mounting and what I ended up doing was uh, I was running 1204 Ubuntu in this particular instance, 1204.1 or whatever it is and I would plug it in and nothing would happen and that was really made me sad. Sad panda. <laughs> that, was, that was an unfortunate situation. So I was like, alright. So I went and installed the, uh, I think it was MTP. Is that the, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, MTP. Mm -hmm. uh, basically installed that from 1210 on my 1204 Bam, it recognized it because it was newer. Now, if you're running 1210 and it's still not recognized, you might see if they have more of a cutting edge release of it somewhere, mm. whether you have to compile it or maybe from a PPA or something like that, um, depending on the distro you're using. So I think the age of MTP that you're running will have a lot yes. to do with it because that was my experience. Yep. So, yeah. I will include in the show notes right underneath his uh, question link uh, a link to a guide to installing MTP oh, and sweet. getting all okay. that going. So Perfect. Uh, yeah, that's what you did. Yeah. This here will utilize Fuse, too, this guide. And then what Fuse will let you do is uh, you can just, yeah. you'll just mount it as a directory, and then you can just browse it like you exactly. would a file system. That would be perfect. Uh, another more, I don't know, kind of slow way through Kansas approach, if you want to just try it out, is uh, AirDroid. Uh, yep. I've, I've actually done file transfers that way. It's not as pleasant nor as fast, but it's kind of on par with Dropbox, I suppose. You can play with it. All right, Matt, the last email comes from Elijah. He just did a little distro spotting for us. He mm. says, thanks so much for the Troy, a show. I try to watch every episode, and it's helped me out a lot. I found a really cool Linux OS that is based on Ubuntu that I haven't seen you guys talk about before. Uh -oh. I thought I'd like to share it with you cool and see name. what you guys thought of it. And uh, it's called, you ready for this, Matt? I love it. I love it's it. called Cylon Linux. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. I know, Cylon Linux sounds That's cool. Like, yeah, it's like some BSG going on. By your command. Uh, so uh, Cylon, the Cylon Linux operating system wow. is easy to use, pre-configured free operating system designed specifically for your home computer. It comes with a massive collection of software, which aims to fulfill your daily digital needs. Uh, I don't know. 
you know, uh, graphically, it's uh, they really they they they're Apple fans. Um, I think uh, yeah, they do have a lot of you're yeah, right. Uh, yeah. But, but other than that, I think it's it looks like a good uh, good option. Mm-hmm, yeah, you know, mm-hmm, looks cool. Mm-hmm. Definitely, you know, it it seems yeah, you're right. All these are images of Mac <laughs> Mac machines, aren't that's they? Same, but that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, look, but, you know. Looks like it's based on Ubuntu twelve oh four. It, it uh, uses uh, the desktop environment is GNOME Classic, but also has Unity and GNOME Shell, of course. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, so you guys can check yeah. that if you might be curious. Might Never be kind know. of fun to play with. It looks like the default application list is pretty robust. So yeah, yeah good stuff. Thanks to Elijah for it's always I'm always curious to see those yeah. things when people send those in. Cool. So there you go. All right, folks. folks. Uh, if you'd like to get a hold of us, uh, just email us Linux Action Show at JupiterBroadcasting.com. Yep. Uh, or hit that contact link at the top of our website. And actually, that's. That's a good, good, that's a good way to go. Good idea. That's how I can filter based on those. Or you can start a thread in our subreddit over at linuxactionshow.reddit.com. Yes. Speaking of filters. Speaking of filters, Matt, uh, hey, I want to I want to mention everybody, if you ha- have not checked out Unfilter yet, episode 28 just came out. I, I am really happy with the way this episode turned out. Lots of great information yeah. in there about the uh, expansion of America's espionage program, mm-hmm. about how the fear of the zombie apocalypse is apparently driving gun sales, and also some clips from an NSA whistleblower about yeah. uh, internet surveillance. Kind of goes into the whole privacy thing we've been talking about. Stuff you want to know about. This is a really good show. You guys go check out episode 28 of Unfilter CIA versus the DIA. Yes. What about yes, you, Matt? Yes. What have you been up to this week? Uh, as always, you can find me at datamation.com. Slide on down to the open source channel, and I'm usually amongst the uh, one of the top articles, sometimes the top article. You never know. And, of course, you can always find my legacy stuff. New stuff is on the way eventually at matthartley.com. So that is datamation.com, open source, and matthartley.com. There you go. There you go. All right, so anything else we should cover before we get out of here? I think that's it. I guess so. I guess we, that's uh, all she wrote. I guess we got, that's all we got for this week's episode. Of course, you can join us live Sundays at 10 a.m. Pacific over at jblive.tv mm-hmm. or download the show later. And, uh, you know, uh, we, yeah. we uh, oh, I guess we should probably, we could pre-announce this too. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to take uh, the week, the Christmas week, we're going to take that Sunday off. Just so yes. you guys know. So prepare yourselves for that. We'll be off on the uh, 29th. Is it 29th or is it 30th? I think. Or? No, it's 30th, isn't it? Mm-hmm. No, yeah, that's no, right. Yeah, so uh, yeah. Sunday the thirtieth, we we no show, no show for us. Sort of no, like no show. No New show. Year's New Year's Christmas week, yes, weekend kind of thing. That that, that fo- the fo- the weekend following Christmas will be will be off. Yep. So, yep. Just yep, 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 yep. Everybody knows that. I know. Family I know. Time. Don't cry. Chat room's getting upset. You guys. Every now and then. Every now and then, even the big show takes hey, a break. You know, sometimes, yep. Sometimes you gotta just you know spend some time with the family. It's important. Well, I don't know. I mean, I might just hang out here in the garage still, but... Uh, <laughs> I'll be here with you, man. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the camera won't be on. We'll just be hanging out. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Never know. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for tuning to this week's episode of the Linux Action Show, and we'll see you right back here next week. Uh, okay, I'm Matt. Uh, what do you say? We, uh... Do the, do the show. Do the Broadcom in my HP Envy, and that, thing, oh, that thing is... I don't care if they're members of the Linux Foundation. Broadcom can bite me. Yeah.